Oh, I am Ray Barker. I'm with CitizenServe, and we're here today to give you a demonstration according to your script that you've laid out. I've been strictly warned not to have any sales, so I had to put the dogs and the ponies and the poodles away, so uh, <laughs> none, of, none of that today. On the line with me is Jim Garvey. Jim's going to be doing the demo. And we, hey, everybody. Way where I can come on board, I can kind of facilitate the conversation. You can see a person, but we can really do a better demo when Jim's remote. He's got screens. We're going to go to a lot of different uh, clients and show you a lot of actual things that match your script that are real, you know, that we're doing with other customers. And so it's a lot easier for him to kind of navigate around and do everything he needs to do at home rather, you know, at work rather than in a laptop. So that's why we, we do it this way. Um, why don't we go ahead and, uh, so I'm an account manager at CitizenServe. And so I work with our customers from you know, the early stages through the implementation. I'm a, a certified project manager, so I've been in the IT world a lot. Um, and then kind of work with them on a go-forward basis after they're implemented and make sure they're happy. I'm kind of the, the throat to choke if something is not going right. I'm the guy you can reach out to, and that's uh, uh, that's kind of what I do. Awesome. And Jim works, uh, he's kind of, he works really across all parts of the company. He understands uh, everything on the implementation side and uh, really kind of, you know, our, our best person that, uh, that we have to kind of show you the system and take you and show you uh, everything that you need to see. Okay, cool. All right. I'm not sure that that's a good representation. <laughs> I think you're overstating my capabilities. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do the uh, Dennis. You want to start the introductions? Okay. Hi, Jim. I'm Dennis from Management Consulting Services, Department of Finance. Hey, Dave, Dennis. Dave Miller, Management Consulting Services, Department of Finance. Hi, I'm Shahira Jefferson with the billing team with the Office of Revenue. I'm Derek Gilbert, also the billing team, Office of Revenue. Felicia Daniel, Office of Revenue. Uh, Natalie Knight, uh, Department of Finance, Office of Management Consulting Services. Ms. Heidi Malloy, and uh, I'm ready. Information Technology. Okay. Dr. Kimberly Kerr, IT Project Manager for AIM. All right, so we'll move forward. We're going to look at our questions to make sure that you're able to demonstrate everything. But if there are you know, specific questions that we need to add to that moment, we will. Yep. Um, and we'll, um, if we could take maybe five minutes and a five minute break every an hour. Sure. Each okay. hour. Yep, I think each hour is good. And then we'll move forward at the end. We just let it, let it roll so we can okay. cover. Perfect. And Jim, uh, I mean, in terms of timing, um, do you want them? Do you feel like we're going to need to hold all the questions to the end, or do you feel uh, we can ask questions as we go and then still sort of make the time? I think we should uh, do questions as we go. Um, Is that all right, Dr. Uh, Kim? If we do a little of that, I think it's pressure in people's mind, and I, I, I think we feel good about the timing. If you're okay with that. I mean, that's fine. I just want to make sure that you're able to cover every, every all the script okay. items. You know, I don't want to make sure that we don't hold you guys with a bunch of questions. Right. And then you're not able to complete the yeah. script. Perfect. Know. And I'll kind of help facilitate if we get a little derailed somewhere. I'll help, I'll help bring us back. <laughs> Perfect. And if you would, um, you know, I'd Oh, yes. Everyone see that all right? <laughs> all right, Jim. We are ready to go. Okay, cool. So uh, my name is Jim Garvey, and uh, I was actually born in Georgia. I was born uh, down in by Fort Benning. Uh, my dad was in the military, career military guy. So, um, so anyways, uh, I'm going to just kind of go down through the through the list. Um, you know, it, it may be a little disjointed at times, but I think it's important we kind of address each item. So. Um, so the first thing really is, is uh, setting up rate uh, rate table um, using NAICS codes. And let me show you that real quick here. I'm going to actually log in. I've got a couple of Star Wars characters here that I'm using. And um, so I logged in as Han Solo. And one really important thing to, to know about CitizenServe is, you know, I'm actually in... Uh, the finance department here, and you can see that you know in some departments I don't have any rights to um, 
to modify things in, in finance I do. So, so this allows me to go into any license types and, and permit types in citizen serve and file types like enforcement and just general case management uh, file types can be set up at the root level here and they can also be set up at the department level or sub-department level. And so when I'm showing you the permit types, uh, here we've got um, in the finance department we have some permit types. And I'm just going to go down here to uh, um, license type, which is the business license types. And um, in this, basically, um, we have several set up. Um, and you can kind of see the different uh, types that we have. These should pretty much match the license types that you guys have today. Um, so, so if I go to add a, um, and I'll just show you the um, license. If I go to add a business, and here I could type in the business name and, and find the address on a map and all that sort of stuff, and we'll go through that later. But if I just go to food services here, and and I pick the type, and I get I get a review here, and we'll go through that later too. But um, I've got an NAICS code here, and um, we're based on the 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 different type of in this particular example, based on the different type of of NAICS code or the different business license, we have you know, kind of pre-populated the, the options you have for this type of business. So this is one example of how we can set up the form uh, for each license and you know, ask for specific uh, codes to that. And so in this particular example, um, when I select the, the code that's applicable, you know, we're pulling up the the tax class that is used in in Georgia or Atlanta um, to determine the rate so that we can calculate the fees. So that's one one example of um, how we can do it. And I'll show you another one in a minute. But we'll jump into they're only going to see that the NACIS codes that are applicable to that type of license. Yes. And then, um, so if I go in and to finance here again, and I look at my um, business license type, I can click on that that type, and here's where we can kind of determine the prefix for the numbering, and um, you know how many days does this expire? Sometimes uh, we have licenses that expire in a certain six months or twelve months or seven years, whatever. Um, and you can see here we've we've determine a scope and everything in citizen serve is going to have this scope. It's kind of like, is this license for this department only? Um, and you know, so we can set up different licenses and cases and activities like inspection types or audit activities that are owned by specific departments. And I can set here to the, the portal options. I can say, hey, I want this license type to be online or I don't want it to be online. Um, I can say I'm going to allow this particular license type to be involved in a um, where where there's multiple attached to kind of an existing thing. So if somebody had a restaurant, and they want an alcohol license, you know, we would want to have those both under the same business. Um, and then down here, I've got uh, some subtypes, and and then you can see the fee structure. Now the fee structure is is set up with a date range. So that you can, if your rates change, um, you can basically set up a, a grandfather the old rate schedule and put a new rate schedule in, um, and that doesn't affect you know. So so if somebody hits recalculate on a, a license for 2014 or something, um, uh, the rate will be correct. So so this is the fee table, and we're on, we're on number two now, Jim. Uh, yes, yes. Um, let me let me show you really quick. I have one other thing I wanted to show you that uh, the um, we're in the admin. We're, this is the admin side. This would be how you set things up, yep. basically. Not necessarily you would see as you know if you're a user or a, a citizen. But can you do a control plus on the screen? Um, it's the so, um, so I'm going to click on this. Um, uh, this is kind of a, a, a custom configuration here for this application. And I, I kind of wanted to show you the, 
the actual where the NAICS code is. So I've got my um, table here, um, and you can see this is sort of the, these are all the custom fields that make up the application, and um, it's very easy to change the applications, add new fields, rearrange the order of the fields in the application, and that sort of stuff. But what I wanted to show you is, is the NAICS code is just a custom field. And if I go here to uh, edit selected field, um, you'll see the information about this. This is a, you know, what we call a long drop-down list box. And um, if I click on view additional information, it's going to show me the codes that we have for this license. So you can kind of see that um, it's easy to add. If I want to add another code, I can just click on Add here. Um, if I want to modify a code, I can I can just click on the uh, Edit button there. So it's it's we're not when we're setting up the NAICS codes and the applications and things like that, we're not um, uh, programming. It's it's you know it's a lookup field, it's a drop down list box that I have complete control over, and when I go over to my administration here, and I look at that fee table again, all those custom fields are available um, within. If I go back here to my fee table, the custom fields are available, and the options in the custom fields are actually available within the. Um, uh, within the table. So if I look at uh, my gross revenue fee here, um, you know, we're basing it off of the tax class. So if I go down here to the bottom, this is checked as tax class one, and um, we can go in and uh, basically determine what the range is. So we're using multiple custom fields on the application here to determine the range. So it's really important when you're doing um, uh, licensing and permitting, you've got to be able to create the applications and modify the applications easily. And then you need to be able to use the application information in your fee table. And so that's, um, you know, that's one of the things that we found, you know, we've been doing this 13 years, it's very important. I don't want to have to go write a script or do some programming to change the fee table. So that's sort of a um, so that's how it's maintained. We've got a custom field with a link on it, and we've got um, uh, the ability to take that custom field and and put it in the fee table. And this has this fee table has about 77 um, entries. Um, in this particular example, um, we actually set it up so that if somebody was applying. Um, you know, maybe three years after they started their business, we were actually calculating, um, asking for their gross revenue from prior years, and um, and using that using this fee table to actually determine what all the late fees and stuff like that are. So you know, it's it's you know, I realize that that might be one issue that you guys have, um, and that's something that we can do. So. Um, so just just real quick. So is there anything that we see on the administration component? I mean, with citizens or all the administration things that you want to have done, we will do for you. If you have reports written, if your fees changed, you want to have new NAC, whatever you need to have done, that's all included. We'll always do those things. Um, normally, those types of service requests, we get those things knocked out 80% of the time that same business day. Um, but you can also do it yourself or have IT can do these things. So it's not you know, that's something that you, you, know, you have to learn or someone here has to learn if you don't want to. It's an option. Otherwise, you know, we're more than happy and do it for the majority of our customers. We take care of all those things for you. But um, at the time of implementation, there is a crosswalk of NAICS codes to our tax class that will be able to help us or a customer build an application from that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll, we'll show the applications part of it. Mm -hmm. Right now, this is, he's showing like how it gets set up. How it gets set up. Yeah. So either this is showing me how I can set it up or I can ask you guys to set it up. Okay. Yep. So I, there's another example in here that uh, I wanted to show you really quick. Um, this is uh, Redmond, Washington, and they're a customer of ours. If I go down and pick their business license, and I'll say that I'm going to do a commercial license. And you know, here's this is their workflow for approving their application. Um, 
and it's an automatic workflow, so that's why that comes up. But so um, there's a couple of things in here that um, are relevant on the NEICS side, and this has got a, um, a lookup basically somewhere in here. We've got, um, let me just find it. Okay, so uh, so here's my NAICS code. And so this one's a little bit different in that um, they have different classifications and they just want your NAICS code, right? So you in this one here, you can just start typing and it comes up with the matches, right? So if I'm in, you know, um, the hotel business, you know, I can type in hotel and it'll find everything that matches with that, right? So that's how I can, you know, we, we can do kind of the, subsection of the NAICS codes with the license types that match up with that or you know we can set up a general um, uh, list like this where they can just pick what they're in and we can do multiple NAICS codes too so you know some of our customers will allow up to six for one business and they actually use all those codes for um, calculating the fees so um, so we did set up, um, is, does that make sense in terms of what you're looking for um, on yeah. the fee schedule side? Yep, I think we got, think everyone's all right, Jim. Yeah. Okay. That covers the issue and the fee schedule pieces, right? Mm -hmm. So the other, kind of going down the list here, there's the object codes, which I assume are kind of like general ledger um, codes in the system. Yeah. And... If I go back in here as Han and uh, I go to finance department, I've got, um, it's really in the same place. Uh, I go to business licenses and I can click on my license type. And for each line item uh, in the fee table, you can put in the account code. And we also have, have a fee group here that you can populate also. So that's, you know, so, so that's typically what we do is, um, with with these, we would set up a, I don't know if this is going to be in here, but we've got a, this this particular one's got a daily remittance report and a general ledger deposit report. Um, all the re reports we do, or most of them, are custom. And so, you know, in essence, um, you kind of tell us what kind of report you want. The reports are actually included in um, in the subscription. So, you know, everybody's got a different back-end financial system and stuff like that. So, you know, they want, the, um, you know, their file to import into their financial system. Uh, you know, it's always a little bit different. Um, even if they're using the same back-end software, it's still always a little bit different because of the different versions um, and the different setups that might be available for one financial package. And so, you know, we just create these closeout reports and general ledger reports as custom reports. And they can be exported to um, uh, to Excel, and uh, you know, and then you can um, use that to import it. And I, Question: uh, Is ad hoc reporting available? It is. Yeah. We'll yes. Yes. Yeah. So here's the here's the Excel um, file that we exported. Um, so uh, yes, ad hoc reporting is. We have a reporting wizard in the system, and you can. Um, you can create, and we'll go through this um, a little bit later. But we can uh, we can uh, create reports. Um, you can store them in different. You can set up your own as a user. You can set up your own folders. Um, you can create chart reports, list reports, map reports, and also merge templates. You know, so like if you want to create a template letter or a template email, and you're just you're gonna take this report and you're going to merge it with a template that you have in the system. And you can do all this without any, um, without any coding. So we covered, um, I don't know if you wanted to go through all of the different types. We do have, um, in the system here, we do have set up um, various types. I mean, we do have a financial institution, insurance company. Um, one that's in here, we've got the, um, you know, the fee structure, it's very similar 
you know, this one's got 85 different rules in it, and, um, you know, it kind of, this is just an example of um, something that's a, a financial um, application. So, um, and alcohol, too, we can do, uh, um, we can do any kind of alcohol, excise tax um, types of things. The, um, and it's my understanding, are you looking for um, uh, kind of collecting sales tax on a month, like monthly sales reports? No. Mon no, okay. not monthly sales. sales annual? Tax. So your taxes are always annual? No, the excise taxes are monthly. Um, uh -huh. They're relating their gross revenue for tax by the drink or yep, okay, whatever. Like okay. Him. Well, we'll go through that. I think that's down further on the list. So the next thing really on my list here is about security. Um, so everything in CitizenServe is set up I'll go into one of our demo wheels here and So security is actually, um, a lot of it's configured by departmental roles, right? So if I, for example, in your case, we might want to set up a department or a sub-department that handles audits. And maybe there's some confidential information that um, goes on in the audit process. And we want to restrict that to you know a specific list of auditors. And so that's kind of what we do when we do the setup in CitizenServe is you can have departments and sub-departments. And I don't have any sub-departments in this particular example, but um, you can kind of have multiple sub-departments and have a, you know, a, a tree that goes all the way down. Um, each department has a list of users. And so you can kind of, as you click on each department, um, and I'm logged in as the system, you know, system admin, or, um, and each, each uh, department, you can, you know, say I'm going to set this up as read-only, a read-only role. You can set up a, um, you know, a manager role that has more rights, and um, and then you know, users end up in specific departments. So, if I go to business licensing here, I've got two users set up, and and I've got different roles here, and these are all in this department. So I've got a manager, a user, a user with no delete a user with no delete, and they um, can edit, they can't edit completed um, or files that have been closed. And so if I click on manager, I'll see the different rights options. And this is, again, it's, you know, kind of at the departmental level. Um, here's my department, business licensing, and I can control who can create my licenses or my case types or my activity types and stuff like that. So. Um, I've got a, I can set view only, you know, so if I wanted to give another department view only and they can't create or modify or delete, I can do that. Um, there's modify rights. Um, there's, we have delete rights, which involve deleting anything in the file. And then there's kind of a higher level right to, to, to delete the whole file. Um, a lot of times we turn that off because we don't want people accidentally deleting stuff. Um, there's an edit closed files, which is really important in this type of work. If I do an inspection or an audit um, where I have a, a code enforcement case or some kind of an enfor enforcement case, I want to know that you know three years later when I look at it again, nobody's changed anything. Um, so that's what that's about. You know, edit closed files and edit completed items is um, is really set up to um, you know if if activity has been closed, like an inspection or review or audit. Um, I don't want somebody to add that. Or if I've got a, you know, a closed out file, I don't want anybody to change anything in there. So also the ability to assign activities um, and accept activities is, um, is here in the system. So can I assign uh, things to the business licensing department? Um, and that comes up frequently when you're um, when you're doing work and there's workflow, you may say, okay, this is this needs to go to auditing or this needs to go to enforcement. Um, and, you know, the ability, you can control that, right? You know, who can actually do that? And then who can view um, departmental tasks? 
So you may, you know, if you're in one department, you may, you may not want to show the audit activities to other departments um, and show who's under audit. So, uh, so that's sort of um, file-based permissions at the department level, and then we have some uh, uh, contact permissions, which is this is managing, um, you know, all the people, businesses, um, contractors, you know, stuff like that. You know, can you create modify and delete those particular files. And then yeah, we've got sorry, some... Go ahead. Go ahead. What does accept activities mean? What, what, does that, what does that mean to the person? Can I, can, I, can I accept activities that are um, assigned, to, um, assigned to the department? So like if there so was a, a review activity. Could you accept that uh, activity for the department? And then it would be assigned within the workflow. OK. All right, so this would be the manager accepting responsibility, accepting activities on behalf of a group or unit of people? Yes. OK. If that's what you want. OK, so that's not necessarily. It has to be there. has to be there. Right. OK, I was just trying to figure out how to measure the, diff the timing difference between when it was assigned and when it was accepted. Oh yeah, we can do that. That's that's not part of the security. It's just that's like a, a report or a metric or um, those types of things. And then down in um, in management permissions, um, I can decide who's who's able to go in and say like manage the lookup options. And the lookups lookup options for us are all the drop down list boxes and permit and license types and um, fee tables and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then we've got uh, manage user accounts. You know, you may want at a department level to have somebody there that can manage user accounts, and um, and then running reports. You know, so that's uh, another one that is uh, is available. Again, you know, kind of at the department level. So if I if I look at a user here, um, let's take a look at our users. I can click on um, Derek here. And um, there's a couple of things here I can have. I can, I can control access to some of the different um, features uh, in Citizen Serve or modules. Uh, you know, seven now talking about the security components. Yep. So I've got um, uh, different. You know, I can say you don't have access to edit payments, or you don't have access to fee tracking. Um, I can take away. You know the. the these things won't show up on somebody's menus if I take them away. Um, you know, I can also control, you know, how what their rights are in terms of working with the property information. You know, can they add a new property or can they just use existing properties that are in the lookup table? So, uh, so here's the roles that are assigned to Derek, and down here you see what you know is kind of like the rights matrix for the organization. And you can see here that you know, hey, I've got I've got view only for animal control, um, and you know, I've got rights to everything in business licensing, um, you know, in code enforcement. Again, I've only got view only, and so what that's kind of how the roles um, kind of roll up into you know, you could set a, a view only for you know everybody, uh, and just have one role that kind of rolls up multiple departments, um, and I think that's this one, um, the assign all, view all, you know, so that's just a, you know, if you want to give everybody rights to view everything, um, you can have kind of a cross-departmental um, uh, role. And so that's sort of how the rights work. And the main thing that's really important is that it's not just this information here um, in the system, it's, it's the departments and how um, the activities are set up like reviews, inspections, and audits, um, and how the the permit types are set up. You know, so that's sort of when you when you set it up, you have to kind of go, okay, well, if if we want to have a department that's um, you know got strict control over their activities and their information, you know, we need to set that up as a department or sub department um, so that we can design the security around that department. Um, in relation to the other departments and stuff, so so that's um, that's sort of a little bit on. And if I go into just to give you an idea here, so that was six and seven. 
everyone comfortable with kind of one through seven at this point? Any think we missed anything or anything you want to go back and see? Power and good. Seen. So, so in here I've got um uh, just to kind of follow up on some of the departmental stuff. You can see here I've got no permits in animal control. I've got permits here in licensing or building. I don't have any um, in business licensing, but I do have business licenses. So, you know, each department's going to have its own um, its own file types and um, permit types and license types and case types. So. Um, the workflow process. So let's do. Um, We're on number eight now. So I'm going to do a. I can remember who I am here. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do a uh, uh, an online application for a business license. Going to do the online portal. So this is um, this is the online portal, and this is done with a uh, HTML responsive design. So you can be on a tablet or device and browser independent. Um, the reason is is because we work with um, uh, the creating the electronic relationship, and you know if you get the citizen involved or the businesses involved, your constituency. Um, you can't tell them what to use, right? So you can't tell them to use, you know, IE 11 or um, particular devices or browsers. So you can see here that, you know, we're, you know, if we go to a form factor that looks like a smartphone, you know, the um, the menu collapses, and we can kind of see um, information. This is all configurable uh, with HTML. So all the graphics and everything on here is um, changeable using a um, Really, the admin or configuration and an HTML editor. So, um, so I'm just going to log in as me here. About um, that, from your constituents, if they don't have to go to the Apple Store and download an app or download it a different app on Google, it's it's just a, it's a web app that acts like an app basically. So everything scales and changes based if they're on an iPhone or a PC or they're on a a, a, a phone itself. And then you don't have to worry about, well, someone has the old app and we've made changes now, but they haven't updated it on their phone. And so they're trying to do something with an out, outdated app. You know, anything that is changed in citizen serve on a license would automatically, real time, be available um, through this process. There's no code that has to happen or apps that have to be downloaded or anything like that. So, um, so I'm going to apply uh, online for a business license, and we can put all sorts of information up here in terms of like submittal requirements. Um, you know, here's kind of a different submittal requirements that we can put in here, and um, we're we're using HTML, so you know we can set up links to external systems, links to external documents, links to your website, um, that sort of stuff. So we, um, you know, that's kind of what we're doing here. Um, so let's go back to uh, business licenses. And I'm going to say I'm going to apply. Now, if I don't have a registration, um, I can go over here, register now, and I can pick my registration type. And um, you know, so you can register as a citizen or anonymously or those types of things. Registration types online, you can um, each registration type. It's and it's 100% customizable with custom fields and everything. You can select what's required. Um, you know, for a business, you might require something different than a citizen. So here we're not requiring any business information, and up here we're, for a business owner, we're requiring their business information. And so this can be customized. We can also ask people to upload documents, like uh, you know their driver's license or stuff like that, or their state you know license and things like that. So that's, uh, but I already have an account, so I'm going to go ahead and log in, and we're gonna. So I logged in, and just yeah. oh, go ahead. Yep. Where where um applicable? Can you please just uh, there's some uh, scenarios in here that we'll want you to kind of show us the steps to just show how it would actually work. Um, okay. Just to confirm that we can actually do we actually have the capability. 
So um, when you go through this initial application, if you could show the team how you would upload, what the deliverable would be in, you know, exporting the file just so they can have confirmation that the system is capable of doing that, that would be great. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and if um, you miss something like that, just speak up and we'll make sure we hit it. Did I, did I miss something, Ray? I don't think nope. so. Not yet. <laughs> I will. Um, so, uh, so I'm gonna. I can click on view my request here, right? And I can see you know my business licenses. So I've got one that's in there. Um, and just so we can click on that, well, I'll show you what that looks like. So we, you know, if I want to see my license, I can. Um, I can also renew my license here. Um, I can upload. I can make payments. I can upload documents um, and those types of things. Um, I can see the review process. So there, I'm going to show you, uh, you know, kind of the first the review process for the license we're going to do online. Um, and this is what it looks like when you log in. So you know, you can kind of see the steps. Each one of these steps you can mark as private or public. So you know, an activity can say you could say that, well, this is going to be private. We're only going to show it on the staff side. And if I have a, a review, like an application review, I can see comments. So here's some comments that uh, um, were generated and probably emailed out um, as part of the process. So I'll, I can uh, also s show oh. that or not show it. Or I can I can also see documents. So here's my business license certificate. Um, I can pull that up and see what that looks like. So that's uh, um, on the portal. You can control what information is required, um, and sometimes it's separate from what we're showing on the staff side, and that's very very easy to set up and configure. So, but let's do a new application because that's kind of what we started out wanting to do here. Um, and I'm going to apply online. I'm now going to come up with another business. Um, so I'm going to say that the, this is uh, these are subtypes that can be anything. Um, you know, I'm. I'm in this particular example, we're saying, are you inside city limits or outside, or are you a home-based home business? And so I'm going to say I'm within. And I'm going to say that this is uh, race sporting goods. And we can have the submittal requirements here in addition. And it's based on the license type that you pick and the subtype that you pick, the submittal requirements document will be available. Um, you know, like if it's an alcohol license, you can have, you know, specific instructions there. Now, this is... Um, Jeff, in, yeah. quick question. Go ahead. Um, what if the company isn't sure, the business owner isn't sure if they're inside or outside the city? Is there a way for them to validate that? We can, yep. Um, we can validate it, you know, as a condition. We can validate it with a hook into when the um, application is saved. Um, let, me, let me show you the, uh, what's going to happen here is I'm going to pick a new business location and um, you can add this to an existing business. So if I already had an application in and I'm applying for a new thing within my existing business, I can do that. Now I'm going to put in part of the address here and um, and so I'll put that in. We can do help with all the fields that are in the system, so that's kind of an example of that. And I click find address. This is going to find the address for me, and this is kind of where you know we could we could uh, say you're yeah you're not you're not you're you're in some other city or something like that. Um, so so this is kind of. So there's several of ways we can do that. On the parcel data, we could load attributes such as it's in the city or outside the city limit, and we could check it on that. There's also layers yep. in the CIS side that we can do that we can validate. Will you guys demonstrate that today? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. So, um, so here's an application, and one important thing to remember is we support a few dozen um, field types for the applications. Um, the we can set whether they're required. We can create help. Um, all that sort of stuff. So we're gonna um, we're gonna pick uh, kind of our primary type of business. This might be you know where you're doing it in AICS code. Um, and I'm gonna say that I'm I'll say uh, retail 
We'll say we're in the retail business, and we can put a we can do formatting with all the with the fields. So here's a kind of a a field that needs a particular format. Um, we can embed the documentation requirements anywhere in the application. So um, you know here if I select uh, select file, I can upload something. Whenever you see that uh, that documentation button. Um, that's configurable. You can say I want only PDF documents or JPEGs or all types of documents. Um, you can say I want it's a multiple document field so they can upload like 10 things or 12 things or whatever if they want to. Um, and uh, the if you're on an iPad or like a, a device with a camera, you'll get an option to you know just take a picture if you want. So that's another thing that we can have. Um, uh, we sell sporting goods, and yeah, so I'll put that in there. And um, and there, I just kind of one thing that's important here is we're you know, so we're going through the application process. But this isn't like a PDF that gets you know that you put a PDF out there and that PDF is filled in and then that PDF has to be processed. I mean, this is our our portal and the applications. They're they're a, the exact application is what you use in the back. It's just a different view from a user side. Mm -hmm. So if we add a field to uh, an application, it's going to show up right then and there. It's not going to have to generate new PDFs or anything like that. Everything is it's the same app. And that's one thing that's really different about it. It's not like our portal is something that we develop separately or bought separately and bolted it on and integrated in with a, our you know, back-end app. You know, we've been a software-as-a-service web-based application for 14 years. And that's the only platform we've ever been. So it's not like we had a legacy system and we had to try to tie that in and develop this and integrate all these pieces. So. But this, this, what we're looking at right now is really the customer. Yes. yes. As, as a customer. Exactly. Okay. He's filling out a new application. And the application, the application. Yeah, applica I'm not sure where we are. Yeah. No, yeah. It's, it's hard to follow sometimes, so please let us know. They're at it. Okay. So um, the applications themselves are also, uh, you know, morph into the smartphone uh, form factor too. So. Um, so this one here, I think, I think this this application, this is in kind of in our one of our demo worlds. Um, uh, we can we can basically, uh, you know, we're we're asking here if they opened earlier than the current year, and we're probably going to hit them with some fines or late fees and stuff like that. Um, we can put a DBA in there, and I'll just I don't know if I've got a. Um, Now, one of the things that we can do, which uh, is helpful with the um, NAICS codes, is you know we can actually set up a link to the website, and I think I've got a link in here, um, like just for like one of these links here. We can set up one that goes right to the um, uh, the search the search tool that's on the web for you know finding your NAICS code. So we can do that. Um, so let's say, I'm going to just say that um, our business owner is, I don't want to add a new contact, so uh, let's say Julie, and we'll say it's a corporation. So these are, um, this is this is an example here of the uh, kind of having a dynamic application. So uh, if I pick a different um, Type it'll kind of ask me for different information, right? So that's um, um, kind of an example of that. That's not a required field. So uh, the business. And so what we've done here on this application. Questions on the form that aren't applicable. You're going to ask a question, yeah. and if they say it's this type, then we're going to ask. You know, subsequent questions will be very specific to that. If they ask, if they answer something differently, then we're going to give them the next set of questions that are just specific to that. And so here's some other questions, um, and I'll just throw some stuff in here. That um, now the, this is an example. These are all custom fields too. The the formatting, the little logo, and all that stuff is all just custom um, custom fields in the application. Uh, and we've got you know fire departments got some questions, and then we've got some other required documents here. I mean, um, I'll just put a couple of. Documents in here, or state license, 
and I'll just put whatever in there. So, so um, this is just kind of an example. Now, when we selected the um, the information higher up, it it it'll put these two extra fields in here, so I can um, calculate the fees, um, and I can decide here kind of how I'm reporting. Um, I'll just th this application I think is based on people. And we're giving them an option, do you want to report FTEs or do you want to report um, hours worked? And so I'll just uh, put this information here. Now, one of the nice things about the process is you can save for later. So if, if I didn't have all the required information for this application, I could click on save for later and this is going to show up in my cart. Um, and then I can submit it when I finish filling it out. So I'll click submit. And and now you got to go research it. You got to go ask them and other people. They can save it, come back, put those answers in, and then submit it. So I got this. Um, I sent out an email. Um, basically, there's there's a bunch of templates you can set up in CitizenServe, which are basically your. Um, uh, you can set up to kind of facilitate the whole process, right? So this is um, this is an example of one of those emails, um, and they're all configurable, um, and it's easy to integrate information into the templates from the the license or file. So um, so I can click on view my requests and. Uh, that email that we send to the app. Say submit. Yep. So it's just confirmation of the submittal, and they can link. Back to it. Here's, uh, here's my raised sporting goods, and I can click on this license here, and I can see the information that I've inputted. We bring in the um, Google Street View of the application, uh, or the, the property, um, and so that's something that's also available. So here's my application, and this is in a, um, currently it's in an uneditable form. We can very specifically control when the applicant can edit their form online. So we might ask them to resubmit it or update an application, and we can control that. And currently, I can't change it. Here's the review that got kicked off. Um, so I can see that, that review process. And here's my documents that I uploaded. So, so that's the citizen side. And I'm not sure if I had anything in, in this particular um, I don't have anything in my cart. I was trying to see if I had an application that I left out there. All this stuff, the, the pictures here and the formatting is all editable, so you can use whatever you want. Um, so I'm going to log out, and we're going to log in as um, somebody on the staff side, because we're really trying to show you the process. Uh, after uh, a citizen um, enters a license, And and here's my uh, what's going to happen in Citizen Surf. So this is the staff side. It's very configurable. Um, you know, depending on my job function, I can I can modify the uh, uh, quick find area here. Um, we also support doing custom fields uh, in this. You know, the advanced search and the um, the quick find. So if you if you have a particular field on an application, and you want to be able to search off of that, and it's custom, you can do that. So um, so I was assigned this application review. So if, let's jump in and take a look at what this license looks like. So here's my um, license on the staff side, and I've got all this information here. Um, I can mark up documents. Um, this is the I think this is the one of the lookup links I wanted to show you is basically I can click on this and it takes me to the um, in this case it's the Washington State um, UBI which I'm not sure what that is but it's it's a way for me to look up um, state business licenses and sometimes we can actually pass the code there um, so so I've got all my information here. And, so that's and just, after going through this process, if there's other places on the web that you need to go to frequently, we can just embed those links and then you don't have to go and type it every time, you can go right to that spot. What about um, if, you, if they didn't complete it, right, you used to do a save for later yep. on that last one, so now why is it on, a, on the work side? 
Okay, so the customer have to finish? The customer did finish. We didn't oh, save it for later. Yes, so yeah, he did save it for later, and now it's it's in the queue. If you had saved it for later, you wouldn't see it on the site yet. It wouldn't even, yeah, you wouldn't see it. And we can do acquire fields so that we can kind of force the customer to provide us all information before it's submitted. Absolutely. So if there's a required, you know, not all of, you know, Pretty much everything is a custom field. Is how we do all those things in that in the app. You can make them required or not required. Some things you can say they're not required up front, but by the time you issue the license, then it does have to be. So there may be certain things, certain situations like that. So it's probably later on, but it's uh, Jim. Will you show us how um, the customer would have paid for a fee? Yes. Yeah, so if um, let's see that you. Let me, uh, most the multi-year fees here, but how would that customer yep. first have to pay that fee? Let me find a. Uh, those are all rules too. So in some instances, you may not want to have them pay until you go through a mm -hmm. step yeah. in the review yeah. process. Sometimes you want to have them pay just a part of it. Just maybe it's an application fee up front, mm -hmm. or uh, you may want them to pay for everything up front. Yeah. So I think in, in this case, there there was a few wasn't required at submittal time. Right now, right, we have them pay for at least the application and zoning fee up front, and then we'll bill them for everything else. So, yeah, we would want them to do that. Okay. Yeah. And so we'll go back. So I'm just going to put that down. Do we need to show out the, the payment side from the citizen? Yep, no problem, no problem. So, uh, um, so basically, this is the fees down here. And there's other fields in here, like I'm not sure what this does, but I think it's basically, hey, if this was you know 90 days late, we're going to calculate the fees based on that. I can hit the calculator, and and that'll um, recalculate the fees for me. So you know that's something that uh, um, is available. Yeah, so I don't so think that, they. Want to see that? I want to see yeah, the itemized bill. Yeah. And not only that, the number of days that it's late, the renewal is late. Can that be system generated? So we don't have people manually selecting 30 or 60 mm -hmm. days. Yes, so it's, yes. Okay. So it's yeah. going to look at the dates was created compared to today and then put right. it in. Okay. Yep. And we'll always update that until it's paid. So, uh, so I've got my review here. And this is kind of the staff side of the review. And here we're kind of doing a, somebody make sure the application's complete. We go to planning and zoning, uh, fire, and the building department. And then it comes back to business licensing. And we, uh, um, issue the license. New process here that we have set up and um, my the user I'm logged in as is, is Derek Christopher and so I'm just I'm just going to complete this first activity and it's going to show up on my list here and so I can click on the permit that takes or the license that takes me to license. Um, I can click on the activity and that takes me right to the activity and I have a whole bunch of um, activity management things here to kind of manage my um, list of things I'm supposed to review or look at or inspect and stuff like that. So, um, and we also have a map that's built in to kind of help you manage your activities. And so I've kind of, everything I've got going on is at this one address. But um, with the map features in CitizenServe, you can, um, we can pull in uh, outside layers. Um, we can go direct and stuff like that. So, um, and, and we'll show you that a little bit more, but we can do street view, uh, satellite view, uh, all that sort of stuff. If I wanted to see what was going on here at this property, I can I can uh, zoom in and um, if I want to see that specifically, hey, what, what's this guy's building look like? Uh, you know, I've got the Google um, view that I can just kind of get a feeling for the, the lay of the land. Um, so I'm going to click on my application review and go complete that activity. And um, so here's my activity. And this is, we can do, and I'll show you a, a couple of examples of activity types. But this is uh, an activity that has review comments. And um, we use these a lot for inspections. You could set them up for your audit, audits and stuff like that. Um, but it basically provides a book that you can click on. And you can say, OK, well, I, you know, I'm going to, this application, maybe it's not complete because there's no UBI and um, uh, there's no revenue or the DBA is not registered with the state or something like that. Um, so I can save these review comments. And they, we support HTML within the review comments. So you can set up links to external systems and, and things like that. Um, and I can also add additional comments in my review. 
so you can edit these and I can add new light items. But I'll just save this. So here I've kind of I'm doing my review of the application and I I pick some common um, common comments and then I can go in here and say that hey I completed this and you know maybe we're going to say that um, uh, you know it's still under review or something like that. So at this point, what we do a lot of times in citizen serve is we have a template, um, a template email or a template letter, and I can generate um, uh, an email or a document here. I'm going to click on email. And so what I'm basically doing is I had some comments on my review in the workflow, and I'm going to send an email out to the customer. And I'm going to send them the incomplete business license application notice. And then I can click, if I click on dot, 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 it's going to show me everybody involved in the, um, in the internal review and also the people, other people involved in the business. So I can send out an email here if I want. And I'll click on save. So, and then I can also attach documents. Um, you know, here I can attach. These are documents within CitizenServe. Um, and then I can click on select external files and I can, if there's something on my desktop or iPad or something, I can send that um, document with it. So, so I can do attachments with emails and stuff like that and um, I'm not going to attach anything. And then I'll click on preview here and this will give us a, an idea of what the template looks like. So here I've got my template email that goes out and we're pulling the review comments um, you know into the template so you know that's sort of a one way to do it we can also set up you know forms and do a combination of forms and review comments um, so just like we can do the application form with custom fields um, I can set up uh, custom fields within this activity here and um, and incorporate those custom fields into, like if I'm completing an audit activity or an enforcement activity or something, if I'm doing an inspection, we do a lot of health inspections, like for restaurants and stuff like that, and there'll be a form there that, you know, in the activity that they fill out, and then they create an inspection report. So that's sort of um, a little bit on that. So I'll go ahead and save this, and this kind of takes me to my uh, review, and here it's showing the comments that I had in the review. Um, and basically what happens here is it's going to go on to the other people here involved in the review process and um, and then you know eventually we're going to issue the license um, or maybe we'll you know not issue the license based reject it or something like that but that's how the review process works and kind of getting into the um, the setup of that um, I'll take a look over here at administration and I'm going to look at business licensing and you know each department can have their own review routes and so you know I've got my uh, workflow routes here and basically we have uh, a couple set up in this example one of them is um, home business license review and then we've got outside um, license review and it's just a regular review um, if I click on this review this shows me the review and um, whether it's automatic or manual, you can have more than one review. So if you need to add an additional review for some special reason, maybe it's in a historic district or something like that, you can have that um, additional reviews. You can also have resubmittals where you're saying, hey, we went halfway through this review process, but you got to start over again. Um, here's the scope again, so I can, um, I can set that. And um, and here's my routing, and one of the cool things about uh, the routing here is that we can set it up to be any combination of parallel or sequential activities. Um, and here, uh, let me click on one of these here, so I'll click on one of these um, review routes, and so you can see here that I can pick the activity type that's that's involved in the, um, and the activity types are all customizable. I can set up a default user that I'm going to assign this to. Um, and the users are always going to be part of that department. So if I pick building here, it's going to show me a different list of users, right? So, um, uh, and then I can, uh, there's a couple email and activity options that we can do. Um, and 
this is due upon, and here's some of the options. You can say, hey, it's, it's due when it gets assigned, or it's due when the previous activity has been completed, or it's due when multiple activities. Say maybe I say, um, I want to be assigned this activity once one, two, and four are complete. Um, and then we can have no due date and some other stuff. So um, you can pick the number of days so that um, you can kind of set up an optimal or best practice type of a thing where you say, okay, due dates are going to be, you know, two days. We want it two days for this particular activity type so that we can be responsive to the um, businesses and citizens. And then you can say here that you, if you want the information in the review to be um, private or public. So, you know, this determines whether it shows up on the um, portal or not. And so that's how the routes are set up. Um, and uh, so you can set up a bunch of different types of routes. And then each, each um, uh, license type, you know, you can have uh, an automatic route if you want to have that. So the review comments, we kind of looked at the route here. Um, one other thing that you have to configure, and really when we do this setup, we, we do all this for you. Um, and then the support includes making changes to it. But it's, it's easy to do, and you can do it yourself. Um, so if I go in and um, we want to take a look at... Um, <coughs> the um, review comments. So here I'm going to go, and this is, again, department specific. So I'm in the business licensing department, and if I go here and I say, um, uh, I want to look at my review comments. Well, that's statuses. Hang on. Um, so here's the list of, of items that we saw um, in the license review. So, and if I go to like say in my building department, which well, I don't have rights to that, so I can't show you that. <laughs> but uh, if I was logged in as an assistant administrator, I could, but I'm just in business licensing. So, um, so, so these are the comments that show up in the comment book. And if I want to edit this, I can. And if the, if the name of the um, review is the same as the activity, that one will automatically be selected um, when you're doing, when you click on the book. So, you know, so if, if I've got a specific review type that match, or review comments that match the activity type, then, then we can do that. And, and here you sell it to the customer? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so that's kind of a little bit on. But if you pick certain things in the email that we create and pull that all that in. So that's that's where the review comments come from. And then the activity types are under activity. And um, these are inherited from the root. So I don't have rights to go in and um, change those. But uh, you know, here's the application review activity type. And I'll just click on create new. So um, say that this is a test. And so I can go in and I can say I want a standard activity type, an inspection activity type, or a review activity type. Um, I can specify whether it's just a task that needs to be completed or whether I'm going to have it be an event on my calendar. So that way it you know, shows up on my calendar. I have to be at this particular business at 2 o'clock um, and, um, and that sort of thing. So that's uh, um, that's how the activities are set up. And the activities can have um, basically uh, custom, uh, custom fields so that um, just like we have with the applications, um, activities can have forms. So that's kind of a, um, something that's important to understand. And the template, the, we generated that template email. And that's something that's here in lookups too. So if I go down to my, um, if I go on business licensing here and I go down to my forms and letters, uh, you'll see here I've got some renewal notices and um, I've got my 
uh, incomplete application notice, which is up at the root level. So let's take a look at that. So if I go over here to, um, and I needed to log in as a system user to have rights to the things that are kind of being inherited down throughout the um, departments. And um, here I can click on forms and letters. And um, here's my incomplete business license application notice. And I clicked on that, and here I can edit this. So we're in a HTML editor. You know, if I wanted to change this particular um, uh, document, I can. And um, I can also embed additional information. So, you know, if I wanted to say, um, you know, right here next to the application number, I could say, you know, I want to put some property information in there, or I want to put some custom field information in there, or just general formatting types of information. If I say property, if I want to put like the um, legal description of the property, I could put that in there. I just click paste, and now that's going to put that in there. So it's it's very easy for us to edit and create um, these documents, and yeah. we don't have to do any programming. Sure. Question. That email that you're sending to tell them that they're missing documents, mm -hmm. so they receive that email, I guess, in their private box. It, it's not like it's not like I didn't submit something properly, and then the system said, "Bone, I can't go any further." So in, in this situation, we we can do both. So if there's something that's not submitted, like or a required field or a document that has to be there. When they go to submit it, it won't let that, that it won't get past that stage. Okay. Now, no, no. So then they'd have to put the right document in or put the right values in a in a required field. Okay. And Wait, I missed that part. I, I thought he was just saying we're going to send you an email. Okay. So so yeah. So what he's saying is everything was submitted, made made all the you know the the minimums for the re required fields and the documents. Then it goes to a person. A person is going to look at that and go, all right, all the documents are here, but where you were supposed to upload, upload your driver's license, it was expired. Now, we, we couldn't tell that when, you know, at that point in stage. Someone has to look at that. Yes. Right? And so now they're going to say, all right, no, this is good. Everything was here that was supposed to be here, but you need to resubmit it with a valid driver's license cool. you know, with, a, with, a cool, with, a, with a recent date on it. Cool. Thank and you. then that, that, you know, what Jim's showing is so like, you know, that review is an activity. We can create whatever custom fields on there we have, to, or a book, and anything on that activity, that review activity, we can bring all that custom stuff into a letter that goes out. So it could be comments, or it could be other fields, or, you know, whatever we have on that. When you do that activity to say this thing didn't, didn't pass, all that can be pulled into the letter, and then that letter can go out to the applicant. And they can see those same comments online if you wanted them to. Thank you. So I had, um, uh, this is an example of, of uh, a permit here, and I've got a review process. Um, and here's kind of the review process. And if I click on this in-state license review, this is a custom activity. Now this one has a form, right? So we've kind of got a submittal checklist. And, um, you know, we kind of go down the checklist here and um, confirm that they've you know, filled in, you know, each one of these items. If they haven't, um, I can send out a, um, a notice to them. And so I think this one, this one may have a, a notice in here. So if I go incomplete application notice, and you can kind of see this is uh, uh, in the, an email saying, hey, you, you didn't put in your e-verify affidavit, and, you know, here's where you can get that um, document. I think about that is when you're doing an activity like a review, you can we can embed all that stuff in and go, this is what I check out every time I do a review. I do these five things, and if one of them is not there, I make a comment, and then you know it either passes or I say it didn't pass, and then I send a letter out. Either the letter was accepted, you know, the passed that piece, or it didn't. So it kind of helps you to kind of, when you do those activities, what are the things I should do every time? But it also leaves you a little flexibility in there also if you need that. So that's kind of an example of, of you know a form and then also a review comment um, workflow. So um, 
So we kind of, I think, is, is there any questions on sort of the, the how to set up a workflow and then, um, you know, the templates or the activities that kind of um, create that? Um, any questions on that? Nope. We're fine, I think. Okay. Cool. One of the things that, you know, I haven't mentioned, but, you know, this is all, you know, yeah. this is, oh. uh, establishing When a customer was establishing the business license online, um, we just want to make sure that as they're uh, entering their address, that it can accept foreign addresses. Does it, can it do that? Oh, so we have some right, right. companies that, you know, they're, they're home basically technically out of the country, right. but they have a location here. Would it be able to accept foreign addresses or everything? So we'd have to, so that would be like, can we show the, the fields? You know, you would say is it a domestic address or a foreign address, and if it was a, a domestic address, then it would have that format would be the next field that would populate down that would have to be filled in. Mm -hmm. And if you said it was a foreign, if they said no, if it's a foreign address, and then we would pull in the whatever, you know, maybe there's two or three different ones that you want to, uh, you know, be able to incorporate for the foreign piece, like Canada versus, I don't know how those foreign addresses work. I don't know if we've done that before or not, Jim, but that's that's how you. Oh, you know, yeah, we um on the um, so basically, let's uh, I want to show you this change of address thing first, um, and we're gonna log in here as um. All right, so this is back to um. Redmond, Washington, they had something in there on change of address, and so it's probably a good example. Um, and so basically, when uh, um, when we create a, um, a license here, and we pull up the form, this is, again, this is their, their workflow, and um, and so I've got a couple of different things in here that I can do. Um, one of them is, and this is, uh, there's another um, question later, which we can handle here, but this is this is kind of license conditions. So this is sort of, hey, we want to print these conditions out on the um, on the license itself. You know, so if there's any conditions, you can handle it this way. There's probably another half a dozen ways to handle it um, also. And then this application type is sort of where we can say, okay, this is newer renewal. Um, and then this, what are you applying for? This is kind of a, a uh, where one way that we can handle a change in location is basically is, hey, I'm, I'm applying for a change in location of existing business, change in ownership, and or just a new license. So they have, um, uh, process, they have, you know, determined that these are kind of the, the types of things that they would do and it's handled basically with a custom field in this case um, there could be a workflow review route um, you know where they um, uh, say that they want to change their location and then we have a change of location workflow um, that's involved and so and I think with this one here we'll if we say that we want to um, change the location of existing business it asks me um, the license number and I think I can, um, I don't know if this, that's probably, it's not a look ahead um, field, but we can do look ahead fields where we can kind of, you know, talk, you just start typing and um, uh, so this is, this is basically, ask, in this case here, if we're going to do a license change, we're, you know, we're asking them for, hey, what's your license number? And then, uh, um, you know, they would fill out, um, the form and this may actually it could actually even populate for them so but that's how we you know conditions we can make a custom field for that um, we can also have on the form you know what type of application is it and um, you know change of address or change of business owner some of our customers actually require you know if it's a new physical address or new tax ID number you know new ownership that uh, they actually put in a new a new application that could, goes through the review process. So so on, on the parcel IDs, um, we 
basically, there's two approaches we take. One of them is we'll integrate with your GIS um, server. And in that case, and this is an example, um, this is the city of Philadelphia. And, and I'm going to log in as somebody that's there. And we're, we're actually real time, we get information. Um, from their GIS server. So um, if I go in here and click on, say, the mapping features, this is a list of all this, um, this user's uh, tasks and stuff like that. But if I click on, um, I want to see the city neighborhoods. Um, this is coming out of their, that layer comes out of their, um, out of their GIS system. And you know, if I click on one of these, I can pull up uh, the file. And um, I don't think we have a. Let me find a. I'll show. I'm going to show um, Somerville's custom fields because that's more exciting. Um, so with each property, we can do custom fields too. So in addition to just kind of the standard stuff. Um, with properties, we can um, import uh, whatever information is available. So um, in this particular, this is, I'm logged in as uh, somebody in, uh, and we've got a search feature for um, finding files and properties and stuff like that. I'm going to search on properties, and I'm just going to put in their city hall address, which is the only one I'm Franny, and I'll search on properties here. And this is going to pull up all the matching properties. If I wanted to see this on a map, I can do that too. So um, it kind of gives me the, that property on a map. Um, and this is their city hall. You know, again, we can, uh, we can pull layers in um, here. We can go to street view and kind of see the street view of that, that area and that sort of stuff. But what I wanted to show you is if I click on this property, in, in addition to sort of the parcel number and the address of the property and the geolocation and all that sort of stuff, these are the, the this is custom fields um, that they wanted available in CitizenServe. And so you know, here I've got um, a lot of different information. So um, Somerville uses us for building permits and code enforcement and health inspections and restaurant licensing and all that sort of stuff. And so this is, we're able to create all these, you know, custom fields and sections for them, you know, so that they can have more information about what's at that location. So um, does that kind of answer how we sort of deal with property information? We can have custom fields. Um, we can put anything that's got a address on a map with the geolocation. Um, when we when we do a search, you know, if we're creating a like a business license here, um, if I put in one Franny, just kind of part of the address information uh, for the physical address of the business, I can pull up, you know, it'll pull up a list of all the things that match. I can select that, um, and this is really true for uh, general cases enforcement cases, business licenses, permits. Um, once I select a property in CitizenServe, I can see it on a map. Um, I, can, um, I can see other files that are associated with this, um, with this address. So if there's an enforcement case or a general case, I can see all that information. Um, I can also see alerts. You know, so if somebody's put an alert on that physical location, um, you know, sometimes with code enforcement, it's you know, there's dangerous dogs, or you can put alerts on people and businesses and stuff like that. But that little um, that little icon shows up if there's an alert on a person, a property, or a business um, or a permit. So, um, so would we would would we be able to, for example, sometimes the corporation is in outside the United States. So would we be able to... Yes, yes. So, uh, so... Um, a foreign address, as, like, a corporation address, 
So, so, so we can, um, there's a lot of, diff with businesses, there's a lot of different addresses, right? There's the physical location, which is not going to be a foreign address because that's the physical location the business is located at. Um, if I pull up, um, where's Jim's Bar and Grill here? So if I pull up this particular file, um, and I look at the licenses in this file, I've got one here, and you'll see that um, there's a, where did my mailing address go? Um, so this is the enter the mailing address, right? And so we just set up custom fields. And so this is, um, this is sort of a line by line that you could have set up. Um, in Redmond, we, and so you, you could enter a foreign address there. Okay. Uh, but. I was saying earlier, you could have a, a question on that form that was, this is a domestic address or a foreign address. And if it's a foreign address, then the format, those fields would, would, would they come up. And if it was the other one, or it was the domestic, then the other fields would come up. Okay. So, so if I, if I, if I look here, this is, um, this is, you know, back to Redmond, and I believe that they had a, um, they just have a kind of a free form address, right? So it's a text field, and you can enter whatever you want in there, multiple lines uh, um, of information. So that's sort of a, you know, another way to handle it is to have, you know, just, hey, put your address in here. And so, you know, for here, this is business owners, you know, so you could, their, their home address could be a foreign, uh, a foreign address, and you would just input the, uh, um, the address the way it's supposed to be formatted here. Um, or they, you know, they would probably enter that on the portal. So, so the non-compliant, um, I set up one example here, um, and if I go into, So we can we can do uh, violations um, as separate types of things. So like a, a code enforcement case where it's not really associated with a license. We can also do violations associated with licenses and permits. And so if I log in here, um, I wanted to show you the um, the violation. And so we can go here to um, lookups, and we can go to the revenue department. And this is just an example. Each department can have their own things that they're enforcing and stuff like that. So I'm going to have uh, violation types here. And there's a couple of violation types that you know we have in here. This is just an example. If, if you want to look at one of these, you can have, you can have a general section. Um, you know, so there there can be sometimes with violations. It might be property maintenance. It might be health. It might be um, building codes, and so you can break out general sections. And again, each department can kind of have their own stuff if they want. Uh, we can put a code in, and then there's also a short description. Um, you can make these active or inactive, so that you don't have to delete them. You just sort of, hey, we're not using that one right now. Um, you can do that. There's Again, there's a scope, so each department can have its own uh, violations. And you can put a full description in here, which you know could be, this is a, a, a large text box, so you can have uh, you know paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs of, of full description and then corrective action, what you're supposed to do to fix it, right? So if I'm in the revenue department, and I think my guy here is oops, Skywalker. Um, if I pull up a file here, um, it looks like I've got Jim's Bar and Grill here too, so I'll click on that. Um, I can go to this Violations tab, and I can kind of see the the violations, we don't have any now, but this is a license, and so um, I can track all the violations, and we can have as many violations as we want, we can keep track of a violation history too. So 
if I want to add a violation, I kind of go over here to add violation. And this is kind of our violation adding um, feature. And it's, it's used in code enforcement and also in licensing. But I can, I can go up here and say, um, uh, we wanted to just like if somebody was non-compliant, we could have all of our different um, requirements here. I can put in uh, what the problem is. I can see the full description of everything if I want to. Um, I can add documents here. Sometimes people take pictures. Um, I can add comments. Um, if I click on that, I can pull in. If I wanted to pull in a, a picture of something, I could. Um, with uh, this one here, this is probably the picture is probably not applicable. But you know, if, if there was something, you know, signage, um, code problems with a building or something like that, you can uh, you can do that. Um, I'll click on save. So you can basically go through here and add violations. Um, and if I wanted to add another one, I could just click on save and add another. Um, when I save it, you know, it's going to put that violation here in the violations tab. Um, I can manage the disposition of this, um, and I can also my documents will show up here um, in the um, in the documents. One thing I didn't mention earlier, but you can um, different documents, pictures, you can mark those up. These are primarily features that building departments use to mark up plans, but you can mark up uh, pictures that you might take out in the field doing an enforcement activity or that sort of thing. Um, you know, if I wanted to. Um, I can add comments and then associate my comments with the markup. And uh, and the pictures may not be that uh, relevant, but you can also, like with a PDF, I can go in and um, let's say I was doing a review and uh, um, I wanted to point out that maybe they didn't, you know, fill out their affidavit correctly. I can um, mark up documents and stuff like that. So there's, you know, different reviewers can have different comments, and then you can have the comments linked to the area that you marked up on the document or application, stuff like that. So um, that's a little bit on the enforcement side. I mean, in terms of adding a uh, marking somebody as being, you know, non-compliant. Um, of course, we can with with the violations. We can show violations on a map. We can show open violations on a map. We can do a lot of different types of reporting with the different types of um, compliance issues. So, um, so I wanted to show you that for 13, and it, it seems like we're going slow, but there's a lot of things we've covered that um, are lower on the list here. Um, so if I wanted to create a map report, we talked about the map wizard, and we talked a little bit about GIS. Um, but if I wanted to create a map report, uh-oh, and So under reports here, if I wanted to create a map report, and I'll, I've got one here that I set up, and um, this is the report definition um, that we did, and I can click on run, and this is going to kind of put all my businesses on a map um, for me, and I can click on these, and I can there's hot links in there. So let's let's create this um, and kind of show you how easy it is. I'm going to click on my map report um, and I'll call it and I can pick a folder you know I can add a new folder and stuff like that each user can have their own folders and their own report list here so I'm gonna say I want to do a map report and I can I can pin this to my home page if I want but I'll leave that out and um, I'm gonna say that I'm, I'm looking for information about licenses we group information together so an end user can do the report so you know we don't you don't have to program you don't have to know anything about the database. Um, so if I wanted to report on violations, I could or payments or activities, I can do that. 
Um, we also do custom reports where we just write uh, SQL script to generate the report. Um, most of the time our support team does that. Some of our customers do that um, on their own. And I'm going to select licenses. So here I'm just going to pick the different types of information I want to have. Um, and I'm going to say I want license information. And I'll pick the license number, the license type, maybe the license subtype, um, the business name. Yeah, maybe we want the issue date because we want to um, look at the issued licenses. Um, you know, maybe we want to throw something in there like what the balance is due and, and those types of things. So, um, and I can also pick from custom fields. So, you know, here, um, you know, I've got some of the numerical custom fields I can put on a report, you know, or the number of employees and stuff like that. But I can see basically all the um, all the custom fields, any ICS codes, um, all the stuff that's on the application itself. Jim, can you create sure. a report real quick where we will be able to see if a company um, reported zero gross revenues for the past three years, just to show us how the report would generate, how the report function works? Yeah, that one's um, probably. Uh, I don't. I don't know if I have a data set um, that I can query from that it would make sense. Um, and it's we're probably that's probably something that we would do as a custom report. So, um, just because it's you know it's probably very specific what you're looking for, and we're going to have to do a some logic in there to compare. Um, do this for you. Just change the revenue. I just saw some fields where you had three three years worth of, of uh, employee data. Can you show can you find a report where we can see three years worth of reporting data and then you can see how the report function works? Um let me let me finish up this map report and then we'll maybe we can go find uh, um, something that's similar to that. So um, so I'm gonna do my selection here based on the issue date. And we'll say that um, we want something uh, greater than 2014. And so you can set up conditions, and I can add additional conditions here if I wanted to. Um, and I'm going to do subtype. Um, or let's let's do license type. That's probably better. So um, so I'll click on run. And so here's my you know map report. So I just generated this. Um, and again, I can go into satellite view of here if I want. And you can drill down when you're doing reports. Um, I can click on this. It kind of shows me what business that is and um, information about them. And But I can, if I want to, I can click on the file number or the license number, and it'll take me to that. And what it does is basically we're, we're, opening, we're opening this in this other tab over here so that you can, um, uh, you can see that. Um, and you know, kind of move over here to another one, pick another one, and select another field. So, so um, you wanted to to do a comparison report on. We can wait until the. I thought since we were in like a reporting function, we can wait till you get to um, the, the. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, we already That's talked about. <laughs> the um the customer report. So that would be something where we'd give you requirements and then you create them for us prior. Yep. So that then we would have them like three years of yeah. zero reporting or so you just put in a support request, I want to report that has this stuff or you you know, you can mock up a little something and, and submit it with it and then our our people will take that. Eighty percent of the time we'll have that report done for you that day. So that's throughout the process forever. in the beginning or forever? Forever. Yeah. So any of the things that you need to have changed in here, your fee structures change, you want a new report, you want a new activity added, you know. Things change, and that's what we know, right? Things in any any business, any organization are going to change over time. And so it takes a little bit of the pressure off in terms of you've got to get it exactly right or we're gone because we're, we're never on. You know, so like we may try something on a foreign address as an example, and we're like, hey, that sounds good, and we start down that process, you're like, wait, it doesn't work because of this. Well, we didn't know that. You know, we all thought that was a good idea, and now it's not a good idea, and we'll do it differently. So that, that's what we're there for. So you said 80% of the time you respond the same thing. Well, yeah, we always respond. So you always get some kind of a note back. You know, we I think we use these respond under 15 minutes and get back to you. 80% uh, of the time we close it out that day. 
So if you get five in a day, then yeah. I mean, we have people, and that's what they that's what they do, and they know the system. They're not, you know, just people that are taking calls or doing messages. They're the same people that do the implementations, rotate through that center, and that's what they're out <coughs> for that day is to whatever comes in to get it done. So um, one of the next things on the list here is, um, I've got my list, and um, we've got the ease of maintaining the rate tables. Are there any more questions on the rate tables? I don't think no. so. I don't care what okay. there. So we, in the beginning, we did an online application. So we did that. Um, the search and verify, we, we kind of covered the NAICS codes. I mean, they're available on the portal the same way they're available on the um, staff side. Um, we've done a new business account. Now, so let me add, um, uh, let me add um, a alcohol license to Jim's Bar and Grill. And I'm going to do that on the portal that Jim's Bar and Grill is in. And just to kind of, this is an example of kind of adding another license to your business. Um, so this is this is kind of the older version of the portal. Um, and when we set up, when we do kind of major updates to things like the portal, there's, it's configurable. Everybody's really on the same version of, of CitizenServe. You can actually just select it. You want to um, use the new portal. It just can it requires some configuration so that you know some of our customers, you know, they may be like, hey, we'll stay with the old portal for a while um, because they have to um, redo some of their um, HTML and they may not have decided what they want to do. Um, so I'm going to go to my account and I've got an account here and uh, where my Jim's Bar and Grill is. And I'll click Submit. And so I can view my request. So here's my Jim's Bar and Grill. Um, and I can renew renew my licenses here. I can view my licenses. But I'm going to apply for a license. And I'm going to say this is part of an existing location. And so that's kind of the difference. You've got new application, existing location. And here it's saying, hey, you already got one, so just pick Pick from the ones that are in your um, in the system here. So I'm going to, you know, pick from uh, Jim's Barn Grill, and uh, maybe I'll kind of add to the description there. And this is kind of where um, the cool stuff happens. You know, you. you we pick the, the form, and the form comes up. And this is, again, a custom, uh, a custom field. And we can add um, different options here. And we can um, also, you know, here's some more questions on this particular form and, you know, whether we've got uh, prepackaged or whatever. So I'm not sure if. Um, all this makes sense, but I can click submit here, and this is going to submit my license, and then it's going to show up. Um, I think it might go to. It, it kind of kicks off the workflow, the approval process for that license. So that's basically an example of um, adding another license. Now, if I go to the staff side, um, I have a question. So sure. this is all linked by the user ID. Like so, so if you had a business that wasn't physically together, and you wanted, you had a bar that was going to be under that license or on another floor, if you if you started entering it, would it find that it would the duplicate and tell you that you have a business already, or would they, like the the bar, have to tell the restaurant, oh, here's the login ID? So um, there can, there can be multiple um, people involved in the license. We can track it different ways, right? So when I first go in, it knows who, who I am. And so anything that's associated with me, and it can be multiple business licenses in multiple different locations, we're all gonna are all gonna show up. So I can add another location, I can add another business license. In the system I, I can you can also look it up by that person. 
and say, what are all the licenses that that person has? You can look at it by address and say, what all licenses are at this address? Or what all people are associated with this specific license? Yeah, business name and all the, yeah. So you can, all those dimensions, you can, we track it in all those dimensions. So I logged in on the staff side, and you can kind of see here that we've got um, our uh, main license, and then we've got our alcohol license under the same file. Um, and I don't, I don't have a review, but um, you know, you could have a, you know, a specific review process for the other license. And then if you know, you click here, you can kind of see um, specific. So you can have multiple review processes for multiple licenses in the same file, and uh, and that sort of thing. Um, the context here, this is kind of, we were talking a little bit about that. Um, I can have as many people involved here as I want. You know, the you could have a entry for, you know, the headquarters company or um, owner information or, you know, local manager, the manager, you know, who sometimes it, with health licensing, we, there's a person in charge. Um, you know, that could be something that's in here too. So you can have different associations to the business. So you can have one person, maybe, you know, um, you add a contact and um, and they can have different associations with different files. And so, you know, um, that's kind of how we, you know, they're, they're, the contact information is going to be in one place, but they can be linked to multiple business licenses and, and have different associations with each. So. So, um, so the next thing on the list here is uh, we wanted to look at. Oops. I, um, so there's a kind of the the um, professional registration, kind of like a multiple like having sub accounts. Um, we do a lot of that, you know, like master contractor and apprentices and all that sort of stuff. So um, I got a, a file example here. This is in the city of Compton. They use us for um, business licensing and building permits and code enforcement and stuff citywide. And um, basically, what we've got here is uh, a main license. So this is the business license, and you can kind of see here the um, the fee structure for uh, the license and information about the the business, right? And so if I jump back, I can see we've got some individual um, licenses here for the um, stylist, beautician, or barber license. So there's, you know, kind of a, and this one's a little simpler, right? It's not the same. It's, it's more of the individual application for the, for the professional. So if you want to have licenses for doctors or um, uh, architects or engineers or any other professional associations, uh, you know, you can do that, you know, basically all under the same file um, and you can have um, the main license and then uh, the sub kind of sub licenses for the professionals. Um, I don't know that they don't have a particular review, associ review associated with that. Um, some of the documents, just to kind of give you an example, um, this is a renewal notice, and we, you know, this is a mass merge uh, um, type of a report. And we can, when we send out renewal notices or batch notices, we can store the the letter that was actually sent out to the business in the in the file. And so here's the Compton um, uh, renewal notice, and you, this is we can do any combination of graphics and. Um, uh, Sometimes we do pictures. Sometimes we, you know, some contractor licensing. We'll do we'll have the contractor's picture and like a like a wallet card. Uh, we do all sorts of different types of documents, uh, citations, and sometimes we have to match the uh, local um, magistrate stuff like that or their court systems documents. So that's a um, an example of that. You, there's a question somewhere in here about the fees, and we can do pretty much anything with the. Uh, um, with the license fees, let me see if I can print this one out. This is an invoice for license fees, and you can see that we've kind of detailed the fees on this notice, and we've got the account codes in here from the fee table, um, 
And um, so this is this is an example of that. Can you make that bigger? I just wanted to see that. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's see invoice here. On that on that mass merge. Uh, so let's say like you know you wanted us to once a, once a month run a, a report that generated a letter for everyone whose business license is going to be due within the next 30 days. So we'd run that and say we got you know 560 of those. But for the beginning of this month, that would go out. You can mail those out. You can email those out. Then each individual, those 560, would be sh would be saved back to their specific file. So when you went back in, you would say, "Well, we sent you that you know renewal letter, and here you know it was sent on the third. It would be in that file, even though they're generated in in, in mass. Each one of those individuals gets gets saved back to the file. So you know all those become part of the record. Do you want them to be able to pay? Like have the link on the letter where they can click to pay. Can we do that this system? Maybe have a link, a hyperlink on the letter where you can see pay now. Because I saw oh, yeah, at the yep, bottom yep. said we made in person or by mail. Yep. So that could go right in and link it back in so they can go pay it online. I think we did we showed uh I can't remember which letter it was, but we kinda of showed in the, like the application, uh, the application except or submittal. There's a link on that. Let her remember that'd be the same kind of a thing where it's just right on there. They click on that, it would go into that. Yeah, this this one's a it's a paper notice, but you know it has it has the link here um, to their uh, to their portal. So uh, so that's that is um, uh, something that um, and and then this this is their certificate here. So. This is one certificate, and then there's another certificate, a different template for the uh, the, the stylus, but it's, it looks like it's pretty much the same. Um, so one of the things I wanted to, to show you is that, um, let's see if I can pull this up. Um, we wanted to, to show you a little bit on the um, mobile devices and I'm going to. So we've done some pretty cool things, like with those licenses too. So like when they, you know, they could print it out and it could have like a QR code in it. So someone could walk up with their phone, scan it, and it would, if you wanted them to go and validate that that license was active online. Yeah, barcoding for the. It's like well, a QR code to work with any. I want to. I want to log in as the uh, the person we were just looking at on my phone here. So this is the. Um, on the on the iPhone, this is the uh, Compton uh, portal. You can kind of see it's you know it's kind of laid out, um, so you can. So if I wanted to go look at that license we were just looking at, um, I can go to my account, and I'm gonna log in. I had a easy login here somewhere. Um, So I'm I'm logged in as a citizen, and I've I've logged in, and uh, I can click on view my requests, and is, this is going to pull up my these are the licenses that we were just looking at. Um, so if I wanted to pull up my business license here, I can. Um, and that. so here's my uh, here's my license. This is the kind of the one we were looking at, and I can see the documents in here. So, like you know, if I'm on the iPhone, I can just go, okay, well, here's my uh, um, business license certificate, right? So, so all this stuff is um, uh, is available. Um, and that's kind of just an example of, of the iPhone, um, and using that is uh, the 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 interface and how it looks um, on the iPhone. So, um, so let's. Uh, there's a, a probably the uh, the renewal process. This is kind of the I'm looking at the renewal process here and I'll just show you that really quick um, in terms of we send out renewal notices um, 
in Compton, let me see if I can see what they've got. Um, these are some of their um, reports. And again, you know, they come to us and say, hey, I want to see different stuff. We did a, a lobby sign-in for them, which is this report here. And it basically puts, they bought a big screen TV, and people can come in and add themselves to the queue um, at the at the counter. And it, and it basically puts the queue up on the, a report up on a big screen so that people know um, their place in line and, and, uh, and the staff can kind of see what's, what people are waiting for and stuff like that. So um, it's pretty cool. I don't know if there's any, there's no data in there because we're not actually, um, uh, we don't have any, I'm the, I'm the test system here. But we, you know, if you want, I can log in and into their um, live system and we can take a look at what's, uh, what's going on there. Um, yeah, what application are you using? For? For the Kieran, yeah. It's really, I think it's just something that, that we wrote. Oh, for the, um, for the queue. Yeah, the, no, the queue is, it, basically it's, we just set up a, a file type for them. And they set up a workstation um, or a computer or iPad. They have something, you know, there um, at the desk. And they, you know, they'll put in, um, you know, who they are and what they're there for. And then we kind of put it up on a big screen um, so that they can kind of track uh, the progress. And then it also tracks the kind of wait time, you know, how long people have been waiting and stuff like that. Um, so, so for for the renewal process, um, if I wanted to renew, I've got to. Want to see that? We could show that. He's just in the test environment, so there's no data right now. I don't think they're more interested right now. They are. Yeah. More interested in the business life and the yeah. process. Right. I'm thinking beyond, over and above and beyond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, but it is a good idea for us that, you know, if we continue, that's something that I think yeah. would be interesting. But we need to make sure that you guys cover yeah. everything that's in the scenario. Okay. And that's a good example of where they came to us and said, hey, we, we have a problem. Can you help us solve that? And just that's part of our services. We'll help, you know, if we can do something, we will. Sometimes the answer will be, I don't know what we could do with that. But oftentimes, like in a situation like that, we'll do it. That's just all covered under our, our support agreement with you. So it's basically built out with Main system. Yeah, exactly. So on the on the staff side, when we do the renewals, um, we're going to have a renewal notice, right? And so that's what these two reports. There's an email renewal notice and a renewal notice. And let's see if we can. Pull something up here. So this is just a you know a batch listing of of renewal notices. You know at this point we would for this this is a printed one. So and we refer um, we're referring the the business to go to the portal to um, to renew their license. We also oftentimes we'll have a um, we'll assign a temporary login and temporary password for them. In business licensing, typically, we're going to have their license in the system. We send them a notice. We say log in, and they can review their information, update it, and um, and and then renew. You know, click the renewal. So I've got um this these renewal notices go out, or we would send out um, renewal notice emails. Um, we can also set up one that's kind of combined where we say, okay, if we have an email address, then we're going to um, uh, we're going to send an email. If we don't, we're going to send a letter. And we can set up a preference within the license that says, I prefer to get emails or I prefer to get a letter. So they can, when they do the application, they can decide um, those types of things. The, yeah. uh, the Jim? Go ahead. Yes. Do you send the renewal notices via email from your um, email platform, or we're we using the city's platform. It'll come, it'll come as, as a, it's infinite versus ours, but it comes as you. As you. Right. So when they re reply, it will go back to whatever that email address that was sent from, even though it originally originated from our system. 
and they reply to it, everything is now just your email system to their email system, and we're out of it. We're kind of out of the loop. Do you have a mechanism to keep track of the emails that bounce back because they're invalid? Many times we find that a customer has has an out of office or I'm no longer here anymore. If you have any questions, please contact blah, 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 blah. And we use that information to update our system so that the next time we do send a renewal, a renewal notice or any kind of communication, we have a better address. It would come back to you just like if you had sent them around. No, okay. So, um, so uh, just to kind of show you again, you know, the, we've got the two reports here. These are merge template uh, documents. One of them is an email. One of them is a merge template. And you know, these are just like everything else in CitizenServe. You can go in and edit this and uh, change information. It's you know, it's all HTML. You can go in if you want to get real specific about formatting. You can uh, edit the source code um, also. So um, the forms, whether they're you know, activity based like inspection reports or review letters or their, you know, your renewal notice. It's all kind of done in the same place. Um, and, you know, so that's kind of, that's kind of cool. So if I was, um, I got my letter and I, I want to go to the portal and I'm going to log in here um, on my demo portal. And I want to log into my account. And I can click on my request. And I've got some business licenses in here. Um, raise, raise sporting goods under review. Um, my um, Jim's Bar and Grill is uh, issued here. And I think that. You know what? This is not the one I wanted to renew. <laughs> so, hang on. Uh, if we wanted to use, I wanted to use a different. Um, uh, a different one that's in renewal status because we have to set the status of the um, of the business license. If I go to view my requests here, I'll look at my licenses, and this one here is actually in. Um, in a renewal status. And you can see here, I, this is the cart. We talked a little bit about this. I've got two unfinished applications in here. So, you know, that's kind of a little bit on the, how the cart shows up when you're, when you save, when you do the save for later thing. Um, but if I go in here to uh, home and, oh, so if I go um, to my request and licenses and um, I'm looking at this, uh, this one, I'm going to go over here to this hot coffee shop. I would click on the hot coffee shop here. And this is, uh, you know, my license. And I can, I can see the reviews. You know, we kind of talked a little bit about that. I can see the documents in here. You know, I can see my renewal notice and stuff like that. But if it's in a certain status, um, and this is the status renewal required, right? Um, yeah. I'll, see, I'll see this. Go ahead. Would that automatically, if we brought the program out, automatically show up in the customer's um, cart every year? For the for the renewal or for the renewal? The renewals don't show up in the cart, do they, Jim? Uh, no, that's just uh, uh, saved licenses. Um, the uh, so so here I can make a payment, I can renew, I can upload documents, leave messages, and um, I can few other licenses um, associated with this. But I'm going to click on Renew. And this brings my application up here. So I can edit the application. Um, and you can kind of control what's editable and stuff like that. So um, I can go in here and update the information. And um, when I'm done updating the information, I would, uh, so this is where you know we would, we're saying, hey, for 2016, um, you know, what's your um, number of employees? And this one's, well, I'll just leave that blank and I'll click Submit. So this, uh, this basically is taking me to the payment page, right? And this is going to be your payment provider. And we can 
this one here is set up to, you know, we, we do credit cards and checking and savings accounts uh, with EFT. But, you know, I would enter my information and, um, you know, at that point, um, my license would be, you know, paid for or renewed. Um, we can also do a renewal process, you know, so that, you know, if there's an approval process that has to happen, um, we can do that. Sometimes with business licensing, you're like, you just, they, you want them to renew and pay and that's kind of it. Uh, we can also have a renewal um, uh, workflow that um, gets kicked off to, you know, maybe a, Reapprove or a, or a shorter workflow that's associated with renewals as opposed to new uh, new applications. So that's kind of how the hey, renewal process hey, works. Um, Jim, yeah, yeah. You can say our payment provider, so so it would link to the link to our. our it would interface. Yeah. yeah. So. They, they probably use a different payment provider, like it's authorized that net, and they're a merchant bank, and they, they're kind of separate. EB Express. They, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. So the, uh, all the portal options are configurable, and um, I can go into administration here. We haven't talked much about this, but um, this is where I would enable the portal. Um, I can pick the old portal if I want, which is live standard or live, and this is um, this is the portal itself. So you can, there's a whole bunch of settings in here for, you know, one of them is the payment options. And we support, you know, various uh, payment providers. And um, we have it set up too, so different departments can have um, different things. But, so there's a, a a payment page. There's a license renewal page. I don't know if there's anything in this one. There isn't. But um, and um, we've got payment processor information you can put in here. Um, in licensing, um, this is the licensing configuration. You can kind of decide whether you want people to be able to search on licenses, and you can decide for each license whether you're going to take an online application or not. Um, this is the editor. If I want to edit these pages, like if I want to edit the main page, I'm back in the same editor that we use for all the templates and stuff like that, and I can um, basically make whatever changes I want. And it's all on the fly. Um, it, you know, all I do is I go in here, I change some configuration, I click save, no coding, um, you know, no taking the system down. It's going to be down on Saturday night or something. I can go in here and edit these pages and change them. Um, quickly. One of the really, really important things about um, working with your uh, citizens online is uh, you need to be notified if the ball's back in your court, right? And so, you know, here for, you know, each license type that you're doing, you can uh, send it to a particular person or an unassigned queue or the responsible user. And that way, if somebody, if you ask somebody to upload a document, you know, you'll get a notice saying that they've uploaded that document and it's kind of time for you to go back to the file and look at it. You don't want to have to keep looking in the file to see if somebody's done something um, that you requested. So, so this is this is this user notifications and assignments, and it's a very cool feature. Um, uh, you can create activities um, to notify people. It'll show up on their home page in CitizenServe, or you can send emails, um, and you know that that works too. So I think in this case we're sending, we can have multiple email addresses um, in here. So you can get an email, or you can get a, uh, an activity. So like in that example we talked about earlier, where they upload their driver's license, but it was expired, and you said, "All right, you got to put a new, an updated driver's license in there." When they went back in and put that new driver's license in. We could notify you in several different ways. We can send an email. We can create an activity. We can send multiple people. You know, so you're not, you know, when something you're not sitting there wondering if somebody did something and it just is sitting there because you didn't know that they uploaded it. So that's a little on the renewal process. The, um, you know, here we've got the next question. Here is kind of how how do you work with um, 
external documents. And really, you know, our goal is to embed the uh, documentation requirements in the portal um, so that if somebody's doing an application, um, you can uh, request they upload the document and then you don't have to scan stuff. If you wanted to, you can have a scanner. You know, if people bring you paper, you can scan it and you can attach it. Um, in the um, in the business license area, you know, we kind of talked a little bit about this, but you know, the the forms can have um, any kind of of uh, documentation information, and you can put those document requirements anywhere in the system. So. Uh, or anywhere on the application, also in, in the activities too. So if you're doing an audit and you want to, you know, get a scanned copy of their tax return or something, you can do that. And it's all done with uh, um, with a custom field type. Um, it's just a, we call it a submittal document. It's very easy to add, and you know they can click on the um, button here. If this button is on an an iPhone or iPad or Surface, you know, it'll let you take a picture from the camera. So, you know, that's kind of, from a documentation standpoint, you know, the goal really should be, um, let's get the online application, let's have them scan it, let's have the, the citizen or the business scan it, or provide us an electronic copy um, when they submit their application. Um, if you want to, and we have customers like uh, the city of Compton, uh, they basically took all their plans for all the buildings in the in the whole city, and they scanned they scanned it in. Um, they had a um, basically a room they called the vault, which was a bunch of corroding and paper that was falling apart. All the plan documents for the entire city, and you know they scanned that in, and we uploaded it. So, do you have that picture, Jim? We were out there. Oh, we have rooms of paper. Also. Yes, we do. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we have, have our we have our own. Yeah, yeah, you know. We have plenty of paper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so now, now that vault, that whole thing, it basically is all gone. It's all digitized, and it's in citizen server. Everything that was in there. Uh, were those um, handwritten forms? What's that? Were those handwritten forms? They were handwritten things. There were documents that went back, you know, like 70 years ago that were in there. Whatever it was, it was just scanned and then associated with the. How did they digitize that? They hired a company to do that. They had someone come in to digitize it and put the, the right metadata associated with it so that metadata was on there and then we just took that metadata and said this goes here, boom, put it in the right place. That's the picture. That's the picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we took that when we were out there. So um, the uh, so so we can um, you know we we can support you know anything that usually that's just the software that you have on your computer and you know some kind of sc scanning device. So, um. so so Jim, can you sh uh, one thing that we are very interested in is being able to see um, like transactional history from uh, different people making different changes, doing different things. Like that. Can you show us how we would be able to like audit everything that happens? Yes. Um, let me uh, I'll log in. As, uh, so we all the files in CitizenServe sort of have a history tab, and um, if I pull up, say, my let's do hot coffee shop because it's probably better. Um, if I pull up my hot coffee shop here. Um, I've got my history tab, and under history, we keep track of everything. Um, when documents are uploaded, when uh, template or emails are sent out, um, when re when reviews are assigned, completed, um, who did it, what time they did it. We've got the time, date, and time over here. Um, you know, so there's really a complete history. Um, and what's really really cool is, and this is this is just an example one, and you can kind of see the uh, the volume of information that is in here. When documents are deleted, all that sort of stuff is going to be in um, uh, in the system here. 
So, so that's one thing. But the, the really cool thing is that for each custom field, um, you can decide, hey, this is an important custom field. And so, so in, in your case, revenue, if somebody changes the revenue um, in the application or the number of employees, things that drive the fee schedule, um, you can um, go to the custom fields here and I'm going to go to my business licensing and here's my business license and here's all the custom fields on the um, on the application. So so let's say somebody changes the NAICS code, right? I want to know that if that's important to me, right, in, in my jurisdiction. And so you can uh, go to edit selected here and if I, if I click on uh, track changes for this field, then every time somebody changes that field in the application, it'll go in the history. So, so you can, you know, you can decide instead of tracking everything on the application because some of it's not that important. If some, if there is something on the applications that you want to change, track changes to, or things in the activities that you want to track changes to, any of the custom fields in Citizen Serve, you can say, I want to track that in history. So. So in, in addition to just sort of general tracking, you can get really specific in terms of what you want to track. So, um, so we've talked about uh, the scanning here. Uh, do we do we want to do more with the, with the fees? We kind of talked about the fee table. Um, when we do when we do the renewal processes. One of the things that uh, we can do with all the letters and um, and the reports is, I mean, we're writing uh, SQL when we do that, and so so we can when we send somebody a late notice, we can say cal we can calculate the fees, um, the late fees, the interest rate, the you know, and, and usually it's point in time. You know, it's kind of like today, in, in you know, like if you get a letter from the government, you know, usually it's it's got some sort of due date. It says your you know, your late fees and your and your interest and your fines, you know, are calculated to you know two weeks from now. You know, hoping hoping that they'll pay it, you know, within two weeks. Otherwise, you got to recalculate it. Yeah, can so you show, um, can you? That's a key for us. Can you show us how it would uh, itemize? all of the fees though with the late fees and any penalties on a customer's uh, bill? Yeah, so we did, um, we, read, we looked at the Redmond um, one. Let me find another. Uh, example. So this is Gulf Shores, um, Alabama. And they're, um, they're complicated. Um, I mean, it's a smaller. It's, it's a smaller uh, um, city, but um, I don't know why I'm. Yeah. People make their passwords too complicated. So <laughs> uh, this is. Uh, so let's take a look at, see if we can find one here. Best Western on the beach. We'll take a look at that. And so here's their, uh, um, how much they pay. And if I go down to the bottom of their license, this is the license here for a, a hotel. And they, you know, apparently they've got alcohol involved here too. So, um, and, we did a data migration for um, for them, so they have the whole um, history of all the payments in here. So, so here we've got um, you know the prior history of all the fees for all the way back to 2006, and um, and then we've got uh, all the checks that we've ever received back to, and then the balance here is zero. So that's kind of the the way the fees look with the license so we kind of we itemize everything um, specifically now if I go to documents I'm hoping I can find something that's their license invoice here is probably a 
good example. So they've, they've got their renewal notice history in here and their certificate history in here. Um, and it looks like this is one of the invoices they sent out at some point in time. And it looks pretty simple. So, um, but we can we can do a detailed listing of um, of fees, and it's actually pretty it's pretty straightforward to do that. Um, so I don't know if that does that answer your question. I mean, we kind of have everything in the license here, yeah. and um, we can we can also. It's very easy to put a fee listing on a document. Um, it, it's probably, if I go to admin here, and we look at their invoice, and general look up items. And so they've got uh, payment receipts. So they've got some receipts and stuff like that here. And I'm guessing this is revenue. And so we've got, they've got some, uh, I think I found one in here that was a final assessment. And it looked kind of cool because it's kind of like an assessment that they do. Um, and so we have some, you know, uh, letter variable things that you can say I want to list everything and you know list a detail of of all the um, of all the fees that are due um, so if I go up here to uh, it's probably associated with general formatting and uh, I don't know where that is fees. So like there's there's some general sort of you know list all the fees. So when you, even when you're generating an invoice or a letter or an email, um, you can easily put you know fee information on the um, on the letter and also payment information. Looks like we've got some payment um, formats here that we can put on on letters and notices and stuff. So does that answer the question? But but you would keep the percentages or in, in the rate tables or in one of your to calculate the fees. The late fees. Um, it, yeah. So so they have um, their stuff's pretty complicated. And if I go to their license types, um, and if we go to just general business license, um, here's all their subtypes. And here you can see the fee structure is kind of grandfathered in here, and then we've got um, this other fee structure. And they have 359 um, rules in here, and so one one of these is you know the, here's penalties and interest. You know, so that's uh, you know there those are things that a lot of times we'll put the that calculation in the um, in the fee table so that. Um, there's like you know the, uh, some different penalty levels that they um, that they have. So so it's you know late fees. We either will you know we'll either calculate them you know kind of point in time or sometimes when people apply late or they they have been operating without a license, we can ask them for prior years and. Um, and then we can use the revenue information or the employee information from prior years uh, in the calculation. So, uh, so there was a so we the customer um, notifications. Uh, we have a bunch of uh, templates in the system so that. If we go in here and we look at the portal, uh, of course, there's there's the main, uh, you know, it, the templates that you can set up with your processes and stuff like that. But we also have a um, it's like you saw an example of the notification. That the application and the email went out. That would be one example of that. Yeah. So, so, and that's where they're down here. So, if I go to licensing and I go down to uh, application email notices, right? I can I can have 
you know, basically what we've got here is all the email notification templates that get sent out. And, you know, your application has been received, your application status has changed, um, you know, your payment's been received. These are all templates that are, you know, modifiable in CitizenServe and um, you kind of use what we have or um, update the information. So. So we have, in addition to sort of the, just the custom templates that are around, you know, review activities or inspections or audits, um, you know, the portal has some templates that, you know, help facilitate the process and um, communicating with the customer as they go through the um, renewal process or application process. And we've kind of talked, we talked about foreign addresses, and really the last thing is this, this there's a question about establishing non-business license permits. And I'm not exactly sure what you're looking for, but I, I've got an example of that. Can we explain um, that a little bit? Does anyone what that? Like other types of permits, we may have a vending, so if it's come up with the business license, then it should pretty much be the same process. Okay. Parking, parking, alcohol, parking, alcohol, parking yeah. building permits. Okay. So, so I'm going to... Anything else there? You guys okay. I think we're good on that, Jim, mm -hmm. unless there's something you want to show specifically. Oh, yeah. Well, I, one thing we haven't looked at here is sort of the search feature, you know, kind of click on this. And um, this is kind of allows you to search for things. Um, and I wanted to just... I'm going to pull up a food establishment and... Oh, for issued, and um, let's see what comes up. Can we do a blind search, or you have to be specific? Can you just put in a name or something? Yeah, yeah, you can put in a, you know, and kind of wild card um, stuff you can put in there. So this is um, this is a health licenses, and you know we've got sort of the street view thing here. But if I pull up this this file's got two licenses on it. And you know it's probably an example of a non, um, not a business license. It's it's a uh, you know they have you know they might have a retail food license here, and then you know they they have to also get a dumpster license if they have a dumpster. So you can kind of see the you know you can add non non business related licenses and permits. Um, that are related, and, and here's the multiple reviews. So here's the food license review here for them. This is pretty complicated, and um, and then the dumpsters get a different review for it. So, um, so that's kind of an example of of you know just having another license that's maybe not really a business license um, associated. And so. Did you guys go down the list here? Yeah, so I've got, it sounds like, so we're kind of down here, um, and we we did a new account. We've kind of looked at the NAICS codes both on the portal side and the uh, staff side. We did a, a license. I don't know why that's black, but let me see what I can do. That's only black, but they all are. Show that spreadsheet for some reason. Yeah, that's, that's kind of weird. So can you show us um, how to um, be automated donning letters for past few accounts? Can you do that, generate? So in general, usually what we do, um, I might have one here. Did you hear that, Jim? A dunning letter? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so, so when we do licensing, usually there's the renewal notice, and then there's a, maybe another notice that goes out 30 days later, and then there's a late notice. And so a Dunning letter, is this, is this just a, a, a late notice or a certified letter um, going out about a, collecting a past due balance? What, uh, it's, it sounds to me like it's just a letter. Late notice, yes. A late notice yeah. letter. Okay. So... Um, certified or anything like that? Mm -hmm. So we do... Um, that's a that's a batch letter in CitizenSurf, and 
I'm trying to see if I got a. Uh, it's like a collection um, letter that we would send out, and I'm trying to think of somebody that would have that. Um, Basically, we just create the letter like we did. They have an electronic signature. Yeah, and we would just give them the format. So they basically kind of showed us. Um, yeah, we can we can put a signature on it for sure. Um, yeah, email or print it out. Same thing, both. You know. So we're good. So you have a batch process. Can you batch. It can, it can be set up as a, as a batch process that's run. You know, yep. every every month. Mm -hmm. Every month. Mm -hmm. Exactly. They can be set up as a uh, a monthly. Like it's just set up. It's automatically spits out at the beginning of every month. Starts in the month. So I think they might have something here in Compton. Um, yeah, I think we're good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. It would just be like a, you know, like the business license renewal. Usually there's a, um, usually there's there's just we set up multiple, you know, thirty days, sixty days, ninety days, last notice, you know, um, before we you know send you to the court system or something like that. So. Um, look at that lobby sign here. This is, they're actually, uh, so they're, they're live. Um, uh, this is the live uh, the city of Compton. Yeah, yeah this is, this is the lobby sign here. So you can kind of see people, you know, type in their stuff and what do they want. It looks like they're, the two people, the pre-sale is, I think, a, uh, um, they have to get approval when they sell a, sell a house there. So um, I think that's what the pre-sale means. All right, I'm here. All right. Mm -hmm. So um, so uh, one of the next things on the list was search. And um, searching is something that we can enable uh, just with a checkbox on the portal. And some of our customers don't want people to search and some of them do so um, so basically you know I can click on the search here and I can go down to say uh, business licenses and if we wanted to look up like hot coffee which was the uh, um, the one that we were working with a little bit before you know I can put in hot coffee click submit it'll pull that license up for me and I can click on the license and it'll pull that up for me here so now I don't have I'm just looking at the the license I don't have like the ability to like open documents and stuff unless I log in and and that's my um, that's my license so um, you know so that's some of the, the search capability one of the things that's really important to know is that a lot of our customers want to put something very specific out there for their citizens um, and we do that on the portal with reports. So, you know, say I wanted to see, you know, code enforcement complaints on a map. I could go and and um, I can any reports that we do for you, you can actually um, provide to your citizens on the portal. So it's it's kind of people are calling in all the time asking the same question, and we can just create a report, put it out there, and people can find that information on their own. They can either do that once they create an account, or they can even do that before they create an account. That helps. So a lot of customers call and ask for give me a listing of the new business license applications for the month of July or any subsequent month. Yep. So we can just produce the report and just put it out there. Yeah, and you can just it's out on the it's out, go here and you can run that report yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the, one of our customers has that specific report. They kind of um, you can go to their um, this is the old portal, but it, we've got reports there and like active business licenses. And the 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 criteria that you can use is going to be sort of what you you specify this. So we can make the search criteria anything. Um, you know, if I wanted to see all the alcohol licenses in, and I don't specify a name, I can see that list and I can export it to Excel if I want. So that's sort of, you know, a lot of times it's issued permits or it's, you know, active business licenses and 
Um, and we can do map reports, chart reports, pie charts, all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, Somerville, we do. They do rat baiting, and so we have a rat bait report of every place they put rat bait down in the city, and oh, citizens no. can go online and see all those mm -hmm. all those locations. <laughs> And so I don't want to go around this restaurant because it's been rat baited around here. Hmm. So I think we were uh, diving into the audit collection and enforcement. Okay. So we kind of covered, I think, most of the payment processing and calculations. Um, the the section 508 is. Um, it's just on numbers, I guess. No. His number is different. Uh, yeah, I, I put numbers on this. Uh, um, so that each section, Jim, but that that's. Oh, okay. So, so the section 508 accessibility, we're a 100 percent browser-based application. So you know things like um, uh, increasing the size of the. Um, And whether you're on the portal or you're on the staff side, um, let me. Uh, you can. Um, you can. You can basically use speech to text um, in the system. You can use uh, any. You know the the tablet uh, features. Um, Look uh, different, so it's it's kind of. I, I think the point I wanted to make about the accessibility is that you know the browser kind of handles that and the device that you're working on. So oh, you locked down. Okay, so. Um, so, so, and then you know things like you know increasing the size, decreasing the size, you know all the, all those features that kind of supported uh, um, by the browser. We're not a, a traditional software application. I mean, it's a browser-based application, just like Amazon or Google. So, um, so if we go down here. The, do you have any specific questions about the IVR system, or is that something? I think they said we, we had talked about that, Jim. I mean, to cover off right. on that after we uh, kind of the end, if we have some time left. Okay. All right. And uh, an IVR system, and it's not just IVR, but it can also be text-based, so someone can text certain things in, and we'll and it operates in the, it's the same system, but it can operate through text as well as. Yeah, and, and it's something that we're you know. Um, we can expand too. So let's do the. Uh, oh, so do audit. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, we had a question. What's the name of the IVR system we integrated, Jim? Um, we use a hosted system that uses Prophecy, which is you know kind of an industry standard, and it's the company's called Aspect, which is um, you know they're pretty much the largest uh, kind of hosting provider for for IVR systems. So it's pretty it's pretty cool. Okay. Um, so under audit and co collections, um, so so for the auditing, there's a couple of different ways that we can handle um, uh, auditing and enforcement. And it sounds to me it is the main issue that you have with the auditing. Is it? Um, uh, People operating a business without a license, um, or not, not reporting their income yes. properly. Not reporting their income properly most of the time. Okay. Um, if they're operating without a license, it's easy just to go cite them and to make them come into compliance. But um, year over year, reporting gross revenues, we can identify fluctuations um, from 10 million to 1 million. Kind of triggers an audit for us. That's where we are. Okay, so you have audit criteria, and what what we would do typically is is we're going to set up a custom process around that, and and it's something that we do very frequently um, with almost all the work we do. Uh, you know, it could be 
uh, we would just need the criteria to kind of select the businesses for an audit. And then what we do is we create an, an activity, right, um, for the audit. What, what actually happens when you do the audit? So we assign, once that trigger happens, like for example, you have a business that has been reporting the same revenue every year. Um, yeah. we, this, we want the system to automatically flag those accounts, maybe like on a dashboard and let us know. And mm -hmm. then we still have the capability to assign those audits to our auditors and have a workflow in the system where as they go through the process of auditing the accounts, all of the information, we're not passing papers around. When, when you do the audits, is it, um, is it, is the information private? Like you want to have uh, audits be kind of in a separate department? Or is it okay to just um, have an audit uh, associated with a business license and have it be just another activity? We, I um, think we should have a um, separate module in the same system, but just restrict the access to um, view those audits, right? The audit accounts to the, the owners and the auditors. Okay, so, so if, if we were going to do it based on, so that only the owner and the auditor yes. would be able to see it and not, you know, a general, the general department that's dealing with not the business the licensing? Department. Yeah. yeah, we would, we would. They shouldn't see the details, I'm sorry. Maybe there's a, maybe there's somewhere where they can have a code that says audited or something. Mm -hmm. But they should, yeah. they should see general information, I'm not thinking. We would, we would typically set that up as a case type. Um, and so, we, there would be a report, you know, that, that you could generate that would list all the businesses that meet the certain criteria, right? And then there would be, we would create um, a file a file type, right, that was called audit. And, and that file type would be owned by the department. And, um, and then we would, you know, we would collect whatever information you would want to collect on the audit. And, uh, um, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of, so it's, it's, it's a combination really of, of a report that creates a file an audit file, and then that audit file gets assigned to somebody, right, in the auditing group, and it would show up, um, you know, at on their list of things to do. You know, there would be an activity, you know, contact the business, and then you could have different statuses um, with that file, and then you can associate the file with the license. Um, you know, that's one of the custom field types in Citizen Serve is you could have a it's just an audit file that's associated with the business license, and um, you know that's kind of how we would how we would set that up. How would the system work if we wanted the audit to be visible to everyone, all of the employees? Well, if you if if you wanted to have it visible to everyone, I I might just set up an activity, right? Um, and 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 you could even inspections are. Um, those are things that you, you could actually set it up as like an inspection type or you could set it up as an activity type. Um, you could also set up a, a workflow route that's an audit. If there's more than one person involved or there's multiple steps involved, um, you could do that too. So there's also certain, we could also do certain, this is not an audit, but just to kind of as a precursor. So like when someone is going to issue a license, you could put conditions on a license, and it said, and like it, that the revenue was less than 30% than it was last year. A warning could come up, so you could go, all right, well, that's okay, you know, that that's fine. Or you can mark it, maybe even that point in time, you can mark something on that file as as a potential audit. So there's other conditions that we can check before you know activities like a, a license is is, um, is issued. Or during the renewal, is it possible to put the last three? two years of re gross revenues, number of employees, to give them some sense of what it was. Of so what it was. So that's like, that person knows, they know what my last three years were, and now if I put a million, <laughs> that million sounds in, weird. There it is. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, we, we could definitely do that. So I, get, I think that the, the, main, the main thing with that, that kind of process is that it's, um, it's typically, like I said, it, there's there's probably 
a couple of different ways to do it in CitizenServe. Um, you know, there's the super secret file approach where, you know, a department owns that and nobody else can see it. There's the, uh, um, there's the activity approach. There's a workflow route if there's more than one step involved. Um, you know, so there's, there's just a lot of different ways to, um, ways to do that. And then we would need, we would need the criteria that you want to use to kind of come up with your audit schedule. Um, when we, when, and you could even, you know, you can, you can have it run as a batch thing too, or you could manually um, create audit activities or, you know, if you, if something comes to your attention, you're like, okay, I want to, I want to schedule this audit, you know, it's kind of like if it was an activity, you just go to activity here, um, you know, select the audit department or whatever department's uh, responsible, and then you could um, select the activity type, you know, which would be audit or whatever activity types you have. And then you can have a form that gets filled out, um, and then, you know, a template, you know, like, you know, you passed your audit or, and I think that I was just looking at, um, uh, it was, yeah, I think it was it was Gulf Shores. Um, you know, they had like a this final assessment uh, letter that they sent out, and it, it sounded a little bit like audit. You know, because they're you know they're doing an assessment and saying, oh, you you really owe us this much. Um, so uh, you know, an assessment and an audit are probably similar. And, and some of that if you do it proactively, you know, if you if you wait and do an audit later versus before we reissue, we know that there's a problem and you know, we want to deal with that up front. So you can really kind of go that way also. And we do we do a lot of um, rental housing inspection programs and um, in inspection autom automatic inspection scheduling for different processes, like the city of Sacramento uses us for their rental housing um, inspection program. And, you know, we have to s select from the rental housing, you know, and, and come up with, you know, maybe they'll inspect 10% or 20% randomly or based on certain criteria. And we'll, you know, we'll create that report and basically it, the inspections or the work um, that has to be done, you know, gets added to uh, unassigned inspection queue, or it might get added to, um, you know, the revenue officer that's um, responsible for that part of town, or those types of business licenses. So it can be, it, it's it's super flexible. Um, you know, the downside is we actually have to know kind of what, you know, how you want to approach it. And the good news is, is that you can change that. You know, so if if you know we. We're we're set up where we're providing unlimited support, so you know you can start out with one process and then decide, hey, you know, we, we found a way to improve this. Um, you know, we'll help update the process for you. So you might you know give us all the conditions that you know if these things happen that we want to do an audit on. You could also say we also just want to do twenty percent every year randomly, mm -hmm. and we can we can do those things also. And I think this is the so this is this has got a, a license invoice final assessment, which to me looked like it was some kind of audit. But um, so it's sort of an invoice is either from failure to appeal. You know they they're allowing people to appeal um, their taxes and it's kind of a appeals process, and then they they do assessments, which is you know. Sometimes, when you're when you're doing your taxing, like someone, if somebody doesn't submit a submit their renewal, you know, you'll you'll give them a an invoice based on what they put last time. <laughs> I mean, I know the federal government does that. Oftentimes, they you know they'll send out notices saying that that you know the last time you you reported a million dollars in revenue. Uh, for 2015, and you haven't paid this year, so we're just assessing you for that plus penalties. 
So. I think we, we covered um, a little bit on the, the task management and the, the investigator stuff, um, mobile. Is there any questions about mobile connectivity or handhelds? I mean, we work with all the different devices. Um, so in audit and collection. <laughs> mobile handhelds? Yes. Can you, um, can the uh, system, the system have the ability to uh, work offline and upload the information once they're back online? No. No, we, we require a connection. Um, so it's, it's, you know, it's kind of like using uh, Amazon or, I mean, so it's Amazon or... Like mobile? No, no it's, it's actually the, uh, let me log in here on a... What we don't want to do is have people carrying around a database and then mm -hmm. right? and then you know, when we make well, you you lose yeah you lose your ability to be um, device independent and I think that's one of the major um, issues with you know trying to create a, a mobile app. Um, I'm gonna for our code enforcement officers they would work off of the same uh, internal uh, platform that you yeah. showed us today so it's not. So um so I'm on a I'm on an iPad and if I go into uh yeah, just have like your data plan on their on their device basically. I mean we work in all kinds. I mean we do with the state of Florida and they we do boiler inspections for those guys and they're down in the basements of all these buildings and it still works. We don't push hardly any data. You know, it's less than an email, you know, every time we push something through unless on the code side is the only place where we push a lot of data and that's on a picture. So mm -hmm. uploading pictures would be the only, but you can take a picture and upload it later, and we can sync. We do some syncing, syncing things with those pictures. Okay. Uh, but that's that's like really the only place where it's ever any kind of a problem that we've seen. I just it's just important to me when those guys go out that they can verify whether or not that business is complying or not right on the spot. Mm -hmm. That's what I was looking for. So this yeah this is a citizen serve on the the iPad. And um, you know, really everything that we can do um, in the office, we can do out in the field. So, um, if I want to run a map report, I can do that. Um, this is just building permit stuff, but I can complete activities. The one thing that that's important to know is that on the um, on an iPad. The controls look a little different. Um, I wanted to go complete a inspection here. I could do, and this is just an example. It's a building inspection, but it's still it, it could be anything. Um, you know, I I can select the um, dates. The drop down list boxes look a little different. They're kind of the finger friendly version of of things. Um, and and then here's like a checklist, you know, that I can I can go in here and just pick some of these items here and save. And so so and then you know when I'm done, I can uh, email out. Um, um, I can email out the inspection report. So it's kind of a a little bit on the. Uh, but they can you can print things right in the field. So we we yep. have got you know these are have a printer in the device in the vehicle. We have some that have just little the uh, receipt printers right, right there on their belt and they can do blah blah blah. Leave it right there. You can also print if you've got Google print, you can print from the field back to the office. So very good. Does functions work the same so if they have we can see where they are and the route optimization piece? Uh, we don't really do the route optimization piece okay. yet. Okay. That's a, um, you know, that's actually a, it's, we have, we, we use the Google, um, Google Maps and we have access to basically the entire um, Google Maps API. So, 
So the route optimization is something that Google can do. We just haven't had any customers um, uh, necessarily want it. Um, when when you're doing a uh, your inspections, uh, and I don't have um, so the, oh, I'm still on here, is Sheena. Um, when I'm doing inspections, I can see them on a map, and I can like if I log in as. So, so we have a map feature here. So, if you have tasks that you're, you can click on the, um, click on the map here and and see um, that. And you can also, when you're, um, you can see that in your calendar, you can see your inspection dates and times. So you can kind of um, already see a lot of things on a map. And I think a lot of our customers typically, if they need routing instructions, they're probably going to use their phone. Um, you know, so it's I'm not sure that you know, most most of the time people working in local governments, uh, you know, know their know their way around. So, but we can. It's something we can do. It's not a it's not a huge thing. So, yeah, we just as, it and it's not it's not we wouldn't it's not, we're not writing it. It already exists with Google Maps. So, um, you just send multiple addresses to Google Maps, and it'll optimize the route for you. GPS tracker. You said they couldn't do that. They couldn't do the GPS tracker in terms of no exactly where they are. So there's so there's other applications. So you can um, we can enable that on the device if a device has GPS. Um, you can see where you are. But the other thing is that um, that's actually kind of already there um, on. An iPad or iPhone, um, you can pull up those addresses. We can we can select uh, an address off the map. So I don't know if I I don't know if I showed you this, but the uh, well, so what we're talking about is being able to see live where our inspectors are throughout the day. So you do your inspection. Yes. So, okay. yes. I mean, is, is there like a breadcrumb trail? The idea here is I find my iPhone type of thing, so I can see where multiple people are in the field at any one time. Right. So each of our investigators have 20 businesses to see or visit during a day. Um, I will want everyone to be the managers to be able to go out and see if they are somewhere in that vicinity, on their way to that vicinity, mm -hmm. and if they're over here, then that's a problem that we need to kind of rectify when they get back to the office. Right. It's sort of like Big Brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Good description. There are certain departments in the city that already utilize that, but we would want to incorporate it with. How do, and how do they do that? Do they do that through, like, by my iPhone and they're all on the same? No, they have. No, you it's just do a lot of GPS tracking. Right, so how, how do they know that? They all have GPS in, yep. in, the, in their truck. And then there are the. Um, oh, in their trucks. Okay, yeah, not on yeah. the not on the device itself. It, it, it's tracking the trucks. Right and now, from, I haven't been involved in the product for a while. I'm not sure if they switched to how they do it with the devices. But if I go into <coughs> network fleet uh, with some of the larger fleets of the city, I can go in and see if I have an inspector that is outside the per their perimeter, mm -hmm. or if they've not made a. Um, uh, inspection at a certain address, or if there's a so we're looking for something like that into it to incorporate into like one. Right. So I mean, does does that? Uh, do you guys track? Can you track their cars, their vehicles today? Yeah. No, that's why we want it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know the capability is right. out there. The technology is out there. That's mm -hmm. why we're asking if it's in. You know, the capability is. Just yeah. So that'd be a, if you wanted to, because I guess your first question is, do you want to do it at the vehicle level or at the device level? At the vehicle level. That is, yeah, they have drive cam. But that doesn't drive cam doesn't track. It just it's actually. Yeah. No, no. But I think they went to the GPS devices in the system. I think they're working on setting that up for the vehicle. Mm -hmm. But do we want it to be at the level? It has to be in the device. Yeah. 
So on there we can find out. I mean, if you put those in, in the vehicle. Sure, we we'll put a little. Uh, you know, we can sure have, them. They can interface like through a web service or something like that, and just say there's you know ten specific vehicles that you want to track. Mm -hmm. You know, if they could give us that information on those locations, then you know it would really just be like a, like a GPS feed, probably. I mean, we'd have to work with that specific provider. Okay in that situation because you'd still want to track the vehicle. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to have the devices, the locator, things mm -hmm. on the vehicles, and then you know we could work with them in terms of our ability to integrate with them. But if they can give us a geolocation for those vehicles in, in some kind of a real-time feed, then we could show it in CitizenServe. Okay. Just like we would, just like we'd integrate with the GIS, which would really, you know, just be giving us those, those locations. Okay. Like so, is there anything down at the bottom that we haven't covered? Um, the customer service and account management. Um, Did you show us your English Spanish functionality? Did I miss it? Mm -hmm. We'd have to like. So I mean, we could we could create a, a, a separate Spanish version for a an application, mm -hmm. right? So they'd pick pick the English version or pick the Spanish version of that. But we wouldn't have the whole application wouldn't be in, wouldn't be in Spanish. Okay. Or like on this on the uh, on the staff side, you wouldn't have an option to see it in see everything in Spanish or everything. So I mean, there yeah, there's there's a it depends on how you know on the staff side, we're not going to have a um, you know, the, the main system is not going to be Spanish. Um, on the on the citizen portal side, you can put multiple languages in there because you're basically setting up the pages um, are HTML. And within the application, you know, if you wanted to have, like, uh, you could have a separate, like Ray mentioned, you could have a separate application that's all in Spanish. Um, or you could have, you know, with the uh, help for the field, you could you could list English help and Spanish help if you wanted to. Um, you know, so that's you know, there's there's a couple of ways to do it. You know, we're not going to have 100% uh, Spanish uh, application on the staff side. You can provide, you know, whatever uh, language you want on the portal. Um, you know, so that's. You know that's an option too. So you could provide two languages on the portal if you wanted to. Yeah, think about that with the new. So moving on, return on ability to track, receive and assign a return mail, like a return mail functionality. If you guys ever work with, if you have a customer, you help them kind of track any return mail, similar to what. Felicia was mentioned about bounce back emails. So, so like on the on the Jim can show on the like on the hard mail piece where like if you generate a, a physical letter that goes out, you know, we can create a field that you put the tracking number in there, and that becomes part of of that of that file. So you know this letter went out and it had this tracking number on it mm -hmm. from a from a physical mail perspective. Um, from an from an email side, you want to show that Jim? Uh, sure. Yeah, that's um, examples over in our code enforcement. Um, <laughs> we have that in code enforcement all the time, where they're out legal documents. So yeah. So if I wanted to go to one of these cases here, and you know, this is a code enforcement case, um, and uh, you know, if I wanted to issue a violation letter, I can go over here to violation, or actually, I already got violations. I want my letter. And so this allows me to kind of issue to the, you know, to the property owner a letter, and I'll pick violation letter here. And with throughout the system, we can include documents um, when we generate emails. This is kind of like attaching a photo to a letter. And and here's the, you know, kind of we call it a letter variable. It's kind of maybe it's a driver's license or, you know, something that information you collect when you generate the letter. Yeah, so I can feel if you're handing someone a letter, you can grab the driver's license. Mm -hmm. Yep. Put the driver's license in, hand them the letter, and that's in there. Yeah, so we, we put in the, so we'll put that up here, certified mail number, 
and then uh, um, you know, here's we didn't talk about it much, but we can we can uh, collect signatures in the field. We can we can put the user signature on emails or documents that they generate, um, and we can also use static signatures. So um, typically, when we do the setup, we'll get a signature signatures from all your users, and then we can put those on the letters. And then here's we incorporated the pictures in the in this letter, so that's sort of an example. That answer the question on that. But I thought we were asking if it's if it's return mail. You'd have to track that on the return. I mean, you'd have that. You'd have that. If it's registered. Yeah. Yeah. Have that registration off. number, and then yeah. But if it's just regular mail, then not. Right. And if it was returned, I mean, we could create a custom field on that to say it was returned. Right, so you'd get it, you'd have it an envelope, and then you know on that file we could create a custom field that says email return. And then probably so meant like so you got that successfully wrong address, right? Yeah. Return mail. Yeah. Uh, the re problem with return mail is um, a function of how cyclical our business is during renewal season. When we're mailing out twenty thousand renewals, and we get. 2,000 pieces of return mail in a short time frame, mm -hmm. it would take a full FTE a long time to get those flagged in the system, you know. So the object here is to make it as automated and seamless or integrated into the system without the manual intervention part. Can you call, bar code, bar code. QR code, that we could, you know, that, you know, information automatically generate, mm -hmm. you know, something like that that could so would be able to stay, you know, if we had that, you know. Right, just to make that process. <coughs> so, so you got you got a stack of the what was returned. Now you just want to go through that more quickly. So maybe it is having a QR code right on that, mm -hmm. you know, scan it, brings it up, mark it, done. Mm -hmm. Scan it, bring it, you know, so you're not, something like that would be, would be something that we could do. I don't think we've done that, but we've done, definitely done the QR codes before. Yeah, usually we're going to, when we send out letters, they're usually formatted to work with a, uh, Windowed envelopes. Yeah. Um, our customers they just like that better. Um, a barcode, a barcode is just a font, um, so we can incorporate any kind of barcodes in the in the letter, and we can make a barcode available um, through the window in the envelope, right? So you know if 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 somebody wanted to um, not have to have to type. The license number again, right? You know, they could they could use the barcode to a barcode scanner to um, to pull up the license number. It's just like entering it from the keyboard. So um, you know, so that that way you could quickly pull up a license and um, and actually uh, and if if we use the QR code, we could you could it probably take you right to the license in Citizen Serve, um, just because the, the that the, the QR code provides a URL, um, so that's you know that's an option. Okay. And we do that we do that kind of stuff all the time, you know where where we have to put a barcode on something. So put it in the window and then you know the enforcement people come by they scan it that's valid. Great. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jim.